guys, Gerald from Hyper Coliseum here, bringing you another one-off video because apparently I only make one-off videos nowadays. Um, <laughs> today, I'm joined by some special members of the uh, judge community from the Bandai Organized Play server. Um, you might have seen them around. Um, they're pretty reputable judges in the community. Um, so above me here, I've got Jamie, aka Lepony. I've got in the corner there, uh, Josh, aka Ludion. And then next to me here, I've got Matt, aka Renegade Luxurio. Um, so we figured we'd come together. We were talking about it a little bit of Dallas, um, and kind of just make like a, like a judges, like round table style video where we kind of just come together, um, you know, and explain how tournaments are from like our perspective, because, um, things are different, um, between like players versus judges, um, as well as, you know, helping people become judges if they're interested, as well as, uh, just answering some general questions from you guys um from the community so yeah without further ado uh we'll hop right into some introductions i am going to cut it here because i <laughs> just realized my mic was muted for the intro so i'm gonna do Let's some go. i'm gonna do some post editing <laughs> magic Let's go. we're going to re-record the intro real quick <laughs> Oh no, I'm terrible at uh at introducing myself. Oh, I wanted to go like I second guess. or third. All right. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I believe so, in you. I'll go ahead, guys. <laughs> uh, so everyone, Matt here, uh Renegade Lux. Um I've been probably a year and a half, two years, I feel like. Um I know when we had the unofficial judge server, uh I took one of those tests and I was there, and then right once uh organized play came out, I um hopped in right away so uh probably about a year and a half two years been a judge um and events i've done a, quite a few online ulti cups and regionals uh did nats for the 23 24 year um judged at gen con i judged at bandai car fest dallas and i will not be judging at uh, nats this year because i'm actually playing so i have my invite and i'm playing this year so Let's go. You guys will see me on the player side for <laughs> once, which just a lot of people haven't. So, next up, who's going next? I'll take oh, Max. Sure. Okay. Oh, so, no, so stolen. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, so again, uh, my name's Jamie. Uh, Discord is Lapini. Uh, so, I much like Matt started, uh, jumped in as soon as Bandai and his play opened their server. I was lucky enough to take the test one week after joining. I passed on December 30th of 2022. And since then, I kind of jumped straight into judging. Uh, the 2023-2024 season, I did a lot more work than this season. Uh, I think I just about 12 events between regional and ulti cups. I did the online Gen Con last year, as well as Nats with Matt in LA. Uh, I was fortunate enough to head judge the online Gen Con weekend, both events, Saturday, Sunday, and I will also be joining everybody at Nats on the judge side this year in Orlando. All right, and uh, I'm Josh, I'm also L uh, Ludion on, on Discord. Uh, I also joined, um, I know for the first year of Digimon, when I was, I was really mostly just a casual player. I got into like the first Nats. Um, and then after that, I said I really need to like become a judge and I really want to get more involved in the game. Uh, I think it's been a little over a year since I got my cert, the first one. And then um, since then, I've been doing as much as I could to try to join as many events as possible. Um, I've been really lucky, lucky and thankful to be able to head judge a couple of events. Um, I've been at uh, Gen Con both online one year and then in person this year, um, some card fest that was a, thankfully um, allowed to go to Nats uh, last uh, for Gen January and hopefully we'll, you know, see everyone, my cat is now touching stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we'll see people at uh, Nats this year as well, which will be really exciting. Yeah, for sure. I guess I'll, I'll run this off because I technically didn't do... Um... I didn't go through like my stuff as well. Um, <laughs> I mean, I 
I got my cert, I think it was like sometime late last, last year, I think. Um, it was either middle towards later last year, um, but I actually didn't start working events until this year. Um, so I'm grateful to have the opportunity. I started with um, Top Cuts Regional out, out in Peoria. And then from there, I kind of just snowballed into like doing Gen Con, doing, um, and I ended up doing Card Fest, which was huge. It was a great time doing it with all you guys. Um, and then, yeah, and then we're doing uh, Nats in January. So I'm super excited for that. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, yeah, a couple online events for Play TCG. So it's it's been a good time so far and just, you know, keep it going. Um, cool. All right. So differences between judging and playing, um, you know, we all, we were all players before we, we became judges. Um, so I guess like how has, you know, judging affected your perspective of tournaments? Um, because like I said, the judging side is way different than the player side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you know. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, I, I, Matt, you want to take that out? Cause I know you, uh, you're going to be playing. So you've been playing in the nets. I mean, fair. I think I'm the actually like minus out of us four. I think I am the one that's the more most split. I would say because I do a lot more playing. Yeah. I've, I've been in I think every regional this year. Um, the it, it, there's a huge difference. Uh, playing it, you have to. Oh, first off, I'll, I'll preface this. I think being a judge helps you better play the game, and mm -hmm. that's why I enjoy doing both. Um, but the biggest difference is like. Yes, judging. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know what every ruling is. You have to know what every card does. You should know that as a player. But as a judge, you have to. And as a player, you can be like, hey, oh, hey, Josh, what what, what does your card do? Like when you're playing, you can ask and you don't need to know what it does. You just ask what it does and like, oh, OK, I knew that. OK, let's go. Let's just do what I'm doing. But as a judge, you're like, OK, I know what these cards do. OK, this is how they interact together. Um, But no, the biggest thing is literally you have to, as a player, you can't, you have more, a little more leeway with not knowing what cards does. Well, with judging, you are expected to know at least a rough, rough, what, rough estimate of what the card does, what <laughs> every card does. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, <clears throat> kind of to piggyback off that, because. I think I have the least amount of playing experience out of us because uh, I have played in a whopping four events uh, since I started playing in BT7. But um, going from playing before being a judge to after, especially if your opponent knows that you are a judge, it definitely puts a different kind of pressure both on your opponent and on you. Um, and so as a player, regardless of who you're sitting across from, I think it's real important to remember that you're both players in this event, and neither of you are judges. And by that I mean, please don't try and fix game states. Oh, man. <laughs> please, please call the judge to fix the game state. I always, um, I always love the infamous, um, you, you oh, the, the judge. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm a judge. I know how this works. And then like, you call no. the judge and the ruling's completely wrong. Yeah, you know, no, that's, 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 that's great. That's genuinely one of my big pet peeves when people are playing. And if something does happen, whether it be like a small infraction or something like, oh, I accidentally drew an extra card, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? It's even if one of you is the judge, like it's your responsibility as a player to call the judge and be like, hey, this happened. I know like, I'm very confident. I know what we should do in this situation, but it's not it's not my place in this moment to to resolve this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't even I go that far, man. What? No, I, I don't, I'm I don't saying, even like, drop the fact that I know what to do. Yeah. No, I meant I wouldn't say that. I'm saying like, yeah. I know myself. I I'm confident. I know how to do it, but it's not my place. I have to, as a player, get someone like you know at judge and have someone be able to handle the situation and in the like, through the proper channel essentially. Yeah. Um, yep. Also, I like what you said, Matt, about because as judges we are expected to know every like not everything, but we're expected to pretty much know everything, right? Um, which on the breast side, when you are a player and a judge, it does fall into, oh, I'm a player. I know what my deck does. I might not know what opponent does. But when you're more familiar with all of the, the decks or you have to be familiar with what the various interactions are, it greatly benefits when you're playing. If you're playing against Takamika, you can recognize when it, like, how are they going to kill you? Or <laughs> if you're playing against a deck like 
Omnimon, right? You know how you're going to interact with a, a card like Miracle in a specific way. You know Omnimon has this two-part deletion like Leviamon does. And things like that, I think, go a long way for being both a player and a judge. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people won't be... Some people don't know that or won't expect it. And you know that's why they call the judge to get a ruling. But you can kind of play ahead in a game um, because you know what your opponent might do or the plays that are open to your opponent with the plays that you make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, when it comes to being a difference between a player and a judge, I think one of the other like neat things in terms of events is as a player, especially when I like the first year I playing, I, I loved going like played in a bunch of events. And one of the little things is you really do want to wait till the last minute to like upload your deck list. You want to get as much practice in as possible. But then on the judge side, please, oh. please submit your list as soon as <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> I'm begging you. Like Buddy. that's a big thing. I... <laughs> Even as please a player, I'm wait. like even as a player i'm like uh three days before deadline Ooh, yeah let's just lock this in we're good okay. yeah even yep. if it's even yep. if it's not the for sure list just please from the judge side lock a list <laughs> in you don't want to run into any situations where like oh i forgot to upload a, like the new changes to my deck or anything like that but i can understand as a player like i remember when i went to digifest miami where it's like oh the night before and we're all in our airbnb play play testing all night to make sure we like our changes are final, you know, mm -hmm. but Hi, don't don't do that. <laughs> like, um... I, I think I think one of the greatest things that I heard of while I, when I was working in Dallas was that, like um, the the more you're like on the fence about your list closer to the deadline, the more you're the more likely you're bound to like make a misplay or like make a mistake during your actual gameplay. Exactly. So you need to so just like lock so. in a list early and just start practicing that. We, I think that's one of like the greatest greatest pieces of advice I've ever heard. Like you know doing like registration and stuff from everyone yeah um, i think that's right yeah yeah but i mean yeah I, I i definitely agree with the sentiment that um you know after becoming a judge and actually like working some events like you're like my play has definitely gotten a lot better than it how it used to be like going back watching my old videos from when i did like online tournaments and stuff because i also started around the same time as jamie did where i started around bt7 um and just watching you know stuff from then to stuff now it's just like wow it's a huge difference um you know sequencing things a lot better just remembering what effects do and stuff like that um but i think like i guess like logistically from a tournament perspective it's like being a player is like it's yeah so you still have the pressure of like playing the game and stuff but then from like the judges side it's it's like matt's had a lot more pressure because you're expected to know everything so it's like somebody calls you over and it's like what does this do and you're just like <laughs> you know yes oh yeah. man you have to be able to respond like in time mm -hmm. um because you don't want to give time extensions like then we're wrong it's, if, it, if a time extension is needed as it is you're definitely going to give it but you want to avoid those situations you want to be able to hit those things quickly and it's mm -hmm. it's a lot to be expected of but of course we need to yeah. be able to fulfill fill that role mm -hmm. yeah. and the main thing is like we've we've all heard this in like our pre-tournament briefings and stuff like that but like we want everyone to make sure they're having a fair and fun time we want to make sure things run on time um and yeah just like keep a fair environment for everyone like we can't be like impartial to like any calls and you know any like players that you know we may know locally we're answering calls for and stuff like that so um yeah <clears throat> um, and I think just to jump off that too, while yes, it is expected that as an individual, we know, I'm not going to say all, because <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, no, no, first no, off, there's no card no, text, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't know all 2000 cards. I know the concepts of the game, but I don't know all 2000 cards. Um, but when working an event, please remember you're a team, like mm. use your team. <laughs> yeah like yeah. seriously though like it's there's six seven ten fifteen people on there like talk to you ask them before the game start or before the tournament starts hey this card's kind of becoming meta relevant i haven't seen it in a year like anything weird about it yeah we um josh and i have had head judge experience we want the judges to succeed Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to add to yeah. that, like, from when we do head judge, one of the things I do enjoy doing, at least, for, like, even if it's a few days before the event, like, when I know who the staff is, ping everyone and be like, hey, this is the new set, you know, is there anything you guys have seen come up recently? I've noticed that in X event, Leviathan has been coming up a lot, and so we might want to, like, 
you know, make sure we're all on the same page for this, or if there's any unsure rulings, it's just, yeah, like Jamie said, like we're, we're literally a team, and it's great to, you know, work, all work together to know that we're all on the, on the same page with rulings and stuff like that. Yeah. And you're not expected to to literally know everything. Uh, you have a team, and I forgot the other thing I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> I'll come back to it. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I mean... Um, oh, yeah. I know. I was going to say... He's figured it, it out. Uh, I figured it out. Um, it's that even though we're expecting everything right, everyone still makes mistakes. Whether it be like on a stream match, on a call, everyone can. Like we're still literally human, mm -hmm. you know. And it oh, happens. why you gotta say stream match first? <laughs> it happens. It genuinely happens. Sometimes things happen. You have to rewind, or you'll catch it. Um, chat's usually an amazing job at catching mm -hmm. things like oh, that. <laughs> um, also, sometimes your level flaming. zero is screaming at you, pinging you, going, "Hello!" Sometimes it happens, yeah. and. It's not like, it's not the, like, yes, we want to be on top of it. It's not the end of the world when it happens, but that's also a big pressure part of being a judge from an event perspective. Um, especially is, stream judging. Especially oh, yeah. stream yep. judging, right? Like, you have to make sure you're on the, t like, you are on top of everything. And it's, especially, you know, we're in a very much faster form or if we were playing a lot of cards very fast. Mm -hmm. Um, it can be, it can be easy to miss things. It, it does happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not the end of the world. It's I mean, I'm I'm literally gonna call myself out from a recent event uh, during the booster box regional. Uh, I think it was like round two or three when there was like uh, Takemi Kazuchi versus Dioboro. The the Takemi Kazuchi player I think like swung with like Sol Luga or swung low end and then went did the full combo and then still did the check before they went into before they or after before after they did in Takemi Kazuchi, but. I was sitting there and the dude was just saying words and words and words and I'm like, this checks out. <laughs> and then I saw the chat was like, the check shouldn't have gone through. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Go back. Yeah. So. Repairing game state is probably, in, in terms of like judging too, I think the two hardest things do end up being repairing game state and slow play. We'll touch yeah. on slow play later. <laughs> uh, I, that's that's one final one. thing I wanted to touch on is like, um, is like slow play and then also, oh God, what was the other thing? Oh, appealing. It's like, as a player, as a player, you need to know like, calling slow play isn't being a dick. Like, okay, yes, you can call a judge and be a dick about it, but also like, if you're if you the main the main things that I see a lot of people slip up on, especially as a player, is like not calling slow play when there's even like any form of suspicion about it. Yeah. Because as it's, judges, it's, there is literally nothing we can do if you call us about slow playing after the match is ended. And mm -hmm. this has been uh, repeated. <laughs> this has been like repeated for like us. Yeah. It is a very stressful experience from our perspective as a judge because there is genuinely nothing we can do if you call us afterwards. As soon as you feel like your opponent's slow playing, even if they're not, even if you just want to be safe, you can add a judge at any point to be like, hey, do you mind watching? We're in overtime. I want to be sure. That's perfectly fine. Never mm. feel like you're the bad person for calling a judge in any kind of situation. That's literally what we're here for. Why, like, why, why we're there. And we're paid to be there. Please yeah. use us. Yeah, we're literally paid to be there. So please add judge, especially for stuff like slow play. Because it's one of the biggest things I've seen in a lot of events, right? Where me, whatever, someone took it too long of a turn and now, oh, I just need to swing for game. It just, it's going to come back to me. It's going to be my turn, but it's over. And the only thing we're able to do in that when overtime is called is resolve any in progress attack. If, it, if it's not an attack that is currently happening, it's over. And that's it. Just please, any spin, any like intuition you have to be like, hey, I'm a little, even slightly uncomfortable. Just add a judge, and we can yeah, yeah. we can do that. And then we'll come in there. We'll look. We'll say, well, I I count the seconds to myself while looking at the timer when I'm seeing someone play. And if they're not playing cards, I'll give them a friendly reminder. Hey, remind, reminder, we're in slow play, or we're in uh, overtime. There's only about three minutes left. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'll count more. And then if they still don't do anything, that's when we move. We escalate further. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, we need to be that. We need to be at the table and, and see this. Yeah. Yes. Um, and also, I, I know Josh was post was talking about it with overtime. Standard time too, please. Like, ah, hundred percent. If you, if as a player you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know, it feels like this. I I always say look at the overall pace of play. Um, if you're like, I don't know, it feels like the overall pace of play. Just, you know, if online tournament judge call at judge, just say. Mm -hmm. 
and like when we get there you can just say hey i'm just worried about the pace like you don't have to you don't have to say i think my opponent's playing slow mm. um you don't have to accuse anybody you can just be like hey i just want to make sure this game is being paced well um during regular time i'm not gonna promise that we're gonna sit there the entire round but um you know we'll, we'll we make sure like the two turns like yeah we we double we make sure if, if anyone tells us anything like we're we'll be on top of it we just have to be responsible for get getting someone and adding a judge i i always like to say please advocate for yourself as a player yeah 100 percent. Uh, which goes back to the appeal thing which as a yeah. player you have full ability to to appeal it like if you're not if you have any feeling that maybe a ruling was off or you didn't have like what whoever said you have the ability to appeal you don't have to take something immediately um and a lot of people i've seen a handful of people not want to appeal like they're they're like um, like afraid to do it or they maybe they're uncomfortable um and then they'll complain about it later like oh i didn't like how this was ruled mm -hmm. and even if it was ruled correctly or incorrectly regardless some people will be upset um and they just needed to appeal and please do that please add judges for slow play please appeal as soon as you're uncomfortable we're there to make sure everyone's having a fun mm -hmm. time that they're enjoying themselves everything's playing correctly and Oh, unfortunately, some of that does fall on player responsibility to, to let us know what's going on. We, while we want to do as much as we can, we we can't do everything. We need we need player help too. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, that's, that's something I advocate to all my locals is um, slow playing and appealing. It's like you're you're well within your right to do that. Um, and it's like again, there's a right way to call a judge about it, and there's a wrong way to judge call about it. Um, the right the wrong way is like like jamie said you know accusing like hey my opponent's still playing can you watch this it's like you can you can try not to sound like or try not to sound like a dick about it but um yeah like jamie said like yeah. I'm, I'm just worried about the pace of the game or something mm -hmm. similar yeah. um just to because that does happen where someone does i didn't mean to cut you off again sorry no, like good, where someone good. does call slow yeah. play right and them saying oh my opponent's slow playing mm -hmm. that's going to lead to an argument you're getting into a fight with your opponent yeah, yeah. like please don't do that mm -hmm. um because then not only do we have to work this is this genuinely does happen right well someone will call slow play mm -hmm. um but they'll say it in a not the best way of course yeah. right because they're not happy that they're we're in overtime i might be i draw maybe i lose because of it mm -hmm. and i'm blaming my opponent and then they're gonna get upset because i'm blaming them um which then leads to when we do join the channel to resolve the the slow play call which is fine that's what we're there for now we have to settle a disagreement between the two players yeah yeah that, that while, can take longer while, while overtime is currently happening yeah yeah yep um yeah it's like the right way to do it is like even explaining to your opponents like hey is there if i call a judge in here for you know uh just so they can watch the match don't even like mention slow play it's just like can i just call a judge to watch this match real quick you know well um, um, the only thing i'll add to that is when it, you know if you don't need their permission but like mm -hmm. just because if you say can i and they say oh no, yeah that's right i mean yeah. I it's just like, <laughs> like ways to think i know about what it. you meant though yeah, but, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah for sure for sure but like if you're um, a doesn't want to call it, it's definitely call a judge yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're pro tip if your opponent doesn't want you to call a judge you should call probably judge. call a judge <laughs> <laughs> no for sure for sure oh, <laughs> um yeah the, oh. so i guess moving on the next thing i wanted to talk about was um you know how to become a judge or like you know how to like study up for it because i know people like there have been people asking about it and jamie i kind of want you to take the lead on this one because you know yeah. things where we are and are not allowed to say <laughs> so yeah, yeah. um yeah and what Gerald's kind of talking about that is uh, i'm one of the test proctors for bandai organized play which means i it is also my job to issue the tests um so for anyone interested in becoming a judge uh joel if you could uh when you post this video also include a link to the organized play discord yeah, i absolutely will yeah. um but you can join that bandai organized play discord um i will say a couple of things um out of order here too because as it hits my brain mm. Um, judge slots do fill up fast, uh, especially at certain times of the year. Um, and so generally, uh, we do, uh, there's an announcement post about when new slots go live each month. 
uh, if memory serves. It is the last Friday of each month. Uh, and they do fill up quickly. So if you're interested, please keep an eye. Please have announcements enabled for that Discord channel. Um, but in terms of like what to study, anything on the rules documents or rules pages for your game, so for Digimon, um, is fair game. And to kind of like interject, like what when he's talking about judge slots, it's like these are slots for literally every game. It's not just Digimon. Yes, that's why yeah. they fell for fast. every Bandai for all yeah. Bandai games. There's yeah. the same link where you can uh, you can um, set your you choose test the day, slot choose essentially. Time. Yeah, you choose yes. the day, choose the time. Yeah, um, and make sure you use the correct link <laughs> for the correct region. Yes. Um, there are multiple links, and they, if you do select the link for the incorrect region, uh, you will not be able to take your test, so please be aware of that. And, and I will have to be the one to tell you that, and it's oh, not a fun geez. conversation sometimes. <laughs> um, yes, uh, yeah, there's, yeah. it's separated into two links. There's North America and Latin America, and then the second link is EU Oceania. Uh, please use the correct link. When signing up, please pay attention to the time. It is your responsibility to show up on time. Um... Please make sure you have the test taker role. Two hours before your test. I would like to stress two hours before your test. Not more than two hours. Um, and, and not less than that. Prefer. And please, not like five minutes before. Ooh. Um, yeah, we got, it's, please just check two hours before paying a test proctor. Let them know you don't have it. We'll get you signed. We'll get you squared away. And I believe when um, you do sign up, like the links auto adjust to your local time zone. Yes, they yeah. do auto adjust. Please keep an eye on it. There are, um, it, I believe for most people, it defaults <laughs> to a 24 hour clock, which means if you see 0200, that is 2 a.m. No. <laughs> uh, if you see 1400, that is 2 p.m. Yeah. Please keep an eye on your time zones. Yeah. Because if you don't show up, it does not count against you. But that you you missed your spot that you signed up for. It is mm. your responsibility. I've done that before too. I've, yeah. I've had a BSS <laughs> judge test I had. <laughs> I I signed up for one. I looked at my calendar, saw that it was at two AM, and I said, "Oh, oh no." Okay. <laughs> um, guess it's two AM. <laughs> like, um, I guess back to like studying material for Digimon. Can I plug? Can I plug someone with the studying? Yeah. yeah. Hey. All right. Cool. So I remember when I first was getting into, you know, wanting to be a Digimon judge. Um, Robo, Robo Sushi, actually, I think he still has them. Amazing old ruling videos on YouTube, which I watched. I, I had to watch all of them because he goes over so many important like things and uh, interactions when it comes to like rules, rules checks. Some of the terms might be outdated, like rules processing is no longer a thing. It's rules mm. check. Um, mm -hmm. but the concepts are still there, and I, like, I know Robo's old videos helped me a lot when I was first yeah. getting into it. Um, yeah, aside I'm... from, uh, sorry, go ahead, Jamie. No, 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 you finish up, please. Yeah. Oh, I was saying, aside from, of course, using, like, the rule section where QAs are huge, mm -hmm. we used to have PDFs of all the QAs, um, when they came out, which were amazing. Uh, now you can actually search by set or cart. Yes. <laughs> I didn't like the PDFs. <laughs> I love them personally. Right. Um, I forgot it who it was. Great. Someone came to an event. I think it was John who had like, a, it was they printed art. out all the PDFs and put a them Bible. into a book, a Bible, oh of, my like a ruling God. Bible. Well, oh, uh, oh, oh, we lost them. Uh, <laughs> oh, there, there, there goes. He he's back. He's back. He's back. back. Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I'm back. I he think. Was, okay, maybe. Was, Voices back. Our Lord and Savior John as well. Hey, yeah. I come back. Oh, uh, am okay. I back? Yes, you're actually you're back, back now. now. You're back. <laughs> all right, cool. You guys are all frozen for me, so I'm glad I'm back. Yeah. Um, oh, Lord. But yeah, the ruling Bible was amazing. But I loved. But yeah, study QAs. QAs go over a lot of things, which and they they are genuinely frequently asked questions. Whether yes, it be something big or small, they they cover a lot. Um, for a set. Um. And yeah, yeah, I would say Robo's videos are great. The QAs are really good to read. Um, the t please read the TRM, um, the Tournament Rules Manual. There's also a Comprehensive Rules Manual. And the CRM. Uh, which, yeah. Yeah, yeah, both of them are, I I think those are two of the best places to study. They'll go over a lot of concepts. Now, be warned, like there are still some translation things in certain spots, um, but we'll usually catch them and bring them up when people notice them. 
Um, it's mostly fine. <laughs> it's mostly like genuinely, it's it's pretty it's pretty wonderful. Like they're they're amazing pieces of like information to use. And uh, oh. the but general advice. Plug, plug yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the general advice I always give to is um, there's two thousand cards and we keep adding about a hundred a set. <clears throat> Uh, you know what's easier than learning 2,000 cards? Like, 30 concepts. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hit, hit those 30 concepts and you can answer every question. Yeah. And so the CRM really comes in handy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nobody else got, has anything to add. I mean, I'm pretty sure we covered mostly oh, uh, how I to, can, like... Yeah. One last thing for studying. Yeah. Watch <laughs> out for some some card at, card ass emails. You just... Oh out there. god, the <laughs> emails. Oh god. So, I, will... I, I know they, they have like this oh god scenario, so um, we have had several several instances where uh, Cardass, their um, their emails will be slightly incorrect or we may need to get further confirmation on them. Um, so, just be, be aware that some of them are not completely correct. Um, just the TRM is, um, the, the, sorry, the CRM is, the Comprehensive Group Manual um, and QSR, but I do want people to be aware of some of the iffy uh, emails that do float around. And for... Cardass is not a is not the end all be all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm bringing it up because it genuinely does happen where you yeah. might see like an incorrect email and people will quote that email. Mm -hmm. um, whether gonna... and yeah, go ahead, Gerald. Oh, you're good. I was gonna say um, for those that actually don't know what like Cardass or like these emails that we're talking about are. Um, it's basically like I think it's like some like email on the Digimon website. Or something mm -hmm. like that, um, where you can actually like email Ben. I don't know if it's like Bandai directly, but like adjacent to Bandai, um, you can basically ask them like rulings questions of like how scenarios would play out. And while yes, they can be correct, some of them can also be incorrect, um, as we've learned with uh, a few of the emails that we've talked about. So <laughs> yeah, the, the translations get very wonky between email between the emails. Like if I recall, they go from English to if correct me if wrong game they, they go from english to japanese back to english yeah like they get they get translated back and forth and that does cause several issues mm -hmm. cardass is a japanese company so when you send the email please be careful be clear if you choose to send an email i'm not going to say don't but if you choose to send an email please be clear yeah make sure you are using correct card numbers because that will help out um and yeah it, it goes from where you send it it gets translated into Japanese so they can answer it, and then the answer gets translated back into English. Yeah. Fun. Well, <laughs> I will add on to, like uh, everyone was saying too, um, when you join the, the Organized Play Discord too, uh, even if like you're trying to sign up or anything, there is a ruling question thread. Oh. That we can ask questions. That is a big one. Um, I know, like you said, you just saw Josh and left. We go, oh gosh, what? Yeah. Um, everyone has probably the same questions you do. People post in there. Mm. Numerous judges will answer, and you can see why. Most of the time, it's not just, hey, yes, this is how it works. Or you might have an understanding of it. You might ask the question, like, hey, does it work this way? And we either say, yeah, you have it right, or a judge will hop in and, like, okay, no, hey, it works like this and break it down. So you can actually understand why things work the way they do. So you, that is another you, good category. I'm really glad you brought up because that's a really good, I can't believe we forgot to bring it up. <laughs> that's an amazing spot. You can, you'll can you even see other judges uh, posting questions yeah. in there to get clarifications from other people. Yeah. Um, it's and That's an amazing resource. Mm -hmm. And you can, yeah. even, you can even search for cards. Um, I think the search on Discord is a lot, bit wonky. Like I think it has to be like the word verbatim. Um, yes. Yes. Like, let's say you're looking for Cherubimon and you put Cherub, um, it might not pop, Cherubimon might not pop up. You have to fully type the name Cherubimon. Yeah. Um, or, you know, Cherubimon won't gonna... be there. <laughs> or Cherubimon won't be there, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That was really big. That's like, the, the main thing for studying is like, the reason we're not directing you to like any specific places um, or like specific like study guides is because there aren't really any, you know. Um, uh jamie can attest this we are not allowed to talk about whatever's on the test especially amongst like people that have already passed like we are just not allowed to talk about anything period that's why there have been no specific like questions brought up no specific answers um it's just kind of like places where if you want to do this you need to go to these places and just brush up that's really the best thing that you can do is just study um yeah you can't so. even talk to each other about it exactly yeah so but yeah 
<laughs> uh, not in my presence. Yeah. <laughs> He's a fucker. He'll... Just don't. Just don't. Oh. But like, yeah. <laughs> He'll strike us down immediately. Um, and I wouldn't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the last thing I wanted to go through here is I did ask um, the community from uh, the Hyper Coliseum community, both on Discord and on YouTube, as well as Twitter, but we didn't get anything from there because <laughs> um, our Twitter is not as used. Um, we are trying to use it more. Um, You'll get there. We'll get You'll get there. there. Um, but we <laughs> we did ask uh, our community for questions that they might have for you for you guys. Um, you know, doesn't have to be related to judging. Just you know, just general questions that you might want to ask someone who is a judge for Digimon. Um, so I'm just going to run down the list. Uh, first one is from their Serum and Discord is which singular card is your most? Why does this work this way? Or like, why is this card so convoluted? Quantum. Yeah, we'll say, can we just can go back to talking about I will, about I will splice that bit in because I was planning to cut it out, but we can go back to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll like cut it in here. I, I, I hate Quantum Mon. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Continue. <laughs> so, good news, Quantum Mon's getting a is it getting a reprint? I know it's, it's an errata. It's a it's, it's a an errata. errata. So it's a, okay. Our first our first functional errata. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for anyone who doesn't know about Quantum Mon, uh, Quantum Mon is a funny card. Uh, level six, green and yellow. Uh, the main bit is start of opponent's turn. You will declare a car uh, owner of Quantum Mon will declare a card category. Uh, Digimon card, Tamer card, Option card. I, I guess you could say Digi Egg, but that's never going to happen. Uh, reveal the top card of the deck, and if that card matches what you said, Quantumon is unaffected by its all effects, yeah? Uh, yeah. All effects yeah. of the declared type. Yeah. Yeah, big card. Yeah. Um, so before there was a lot of controversy and just misunderstanding of, okay, but what if my Quantumon has inherited effects that affect it? Like block? And, like block? Yeah. <laughs> and for the longest yeah. time, it was... Um, it's it's not affected. It's not affected by any effects from Digimon. Um, with this functional errata, it is now not affected by effects from Digimon that aren't Quantum Mon. <laughs> yeah. So it's right. no longer... A, it's, no, it's no longer immune to itself. Or no longer, <laughs> thank the, which was the funny. paradox of Quantum Mon. Oh. Like, I remember the, does Quantumon activate its own on deletion was like a big thing for the longest time. Yes. When does yeah. an on deletion active actually tri or trigger? Because we activate it in Crash, but where does it trigger? Where does it fun. get its uh, DP boost from its inherits? Yeah. <laughs> right? Quantum was so right. fun. But Quantum's fixed. I'm very happy about that. It is that. fixed. <laughs> and it's one good thing about, one, one weird thing that a lot of people probably won't know too. You can't blast. You can't counter time blast on it because that is a Digimon effect from the card That's that it's blasting. incredibly fun. Yeah. So you cannot, you can't pallet mode, because that's the only level, no, sorry, uh, it's Shusano? Ace. Wait, yeah, yeah Shusano, and, Shusano. Shusano. I, and I guess Susan now. Susan's a yeah. thing now. And Susano. Yeah. But yeah, so you can't, any of those three, because I think that's that's all we have right now for level sevens, mm -hmm. they can't blast it yeah. on top of a quantum if it has protection it's from protection. Protection. Interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> I hate Quantum Mon. I just learned that too. He didn't know. I think I would literally, if I knew a table was playing Quantum Mon, I think I literally tried to like pass it off to somebody who knew more about Quantum Mon because I was like, I don't, I'm not qualified on this one, guys. That was my bad. I no, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Quantum Mon card. Quantum is a card. Card of all time. What's another? What's another convoluted card? Uh, Lodar? OG Paladin mode. OG Paladin mode. OG Paladin mode was one, yeah. Yeah. That's that confused people. Because I think while. it was like the the period doesn't it doesn't separate the effects like it normally does. So, not only that, but when we had OG and uh, Paladin mode versus when we got RB Amphimon, um, was like why do these look almost the same but work completely different with their yeah. um. And I recall one of them has buy or do it. There's like one word was like one extra word. Is it two? Uh, BT okay. eight paladin mode is by returning something or another, do yeah. something, then put the ten digital uh, ten cards from trash to the bottom yes. of the deck. Yeah. So everything's dependent on that cost. Well, Amphimon, what was their wording on Amphi? Amphi is just you may do this. 
if, if you did if, if yeah. you did do yeah and because of it's worried like that they look very similar but Amphimon's not dependent on the cost while paladin mode was mm -hmm. um and i'll reveal that confused me for a good minute when that when that first when i first looked at the two cards like why are these different mm -hmm. um but now now we know <laughs> now we have lots yeah. of cards like lots of cards that bring that up I had a, I had a card in mind. I just forgot what it was because we we <laughs> I, pushed I, back I recording thing. so much. Was it purple? <laughs> um, I probably it was could also enough. it could also be RB Amphimon's one versus one, one the number one Ooh. versus oh, one. Man. Oh, oh man! I'm so glad <laughs> that that I'm so glad the best standardization text that's happened in the past like six months has been changing the word one to the word any. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Which that was that's so big. So. All of our old cards, which unfortunately decoy was also worded with the word one, which is incorrect, and that got eroded to the number one. Um, because in Digimon, one means the word one means any. Mm. Um, like Jamie said, but the number one means one, a singular, um, singular yeah. Digimon, singular target. <laughs> um, and that <laughs> that I think was one of the big why is the so why is one why does one not mean one was a is a big convoluted yeah. thing. But, yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. So the next one here uh, is from Charlie on also on the Discord. I think these first couple one or like these first majority of questions are going to be different Discord, and then we'll grab some from YouTube. Um, is what surprised you most about being a judge, and what advice would you give to people applying to be judges, or would you even recommend judging? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of what surprised me most. That's weird. Um, recommended advice for people applying to be judge would be definitely to study brush up on various things yeah um you have to like the um i i personally love being a judge and i would recommend it to anyone who enjoys the game as a whole like the and getting to talk to other other judges other players like my one of my favorite things is when we go to an in-person event i get to walk around i get to like shoot this shit with all the players um and help and teach like <laughs> teaching yeah. and like helping people is my favorite i'm as my favorite thing like I'm, I'm 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 a teacher like that's what i do for work <laughs> and being able to also bring that to like Digimon and being like uh and helping people learn learn things just it goes a long way for me between both that and getting to interact with so many people um yeah. i love mm -hmm. that and i would rec i would recommend that to anyone who who wants to do that um mm -hmm. when i'm trying to think what surprised me the most though i mean oh, you don't, you, for me i was gonna say you don't you don't have yeah, to yeah. answer it yeah. well i'm yeah. i think yeah. I think what it might be is how many people that want to be a judge but don't want to judge an event or don't mm. want to That's actually fair. judge. Yeah, um, I think that genuinely surprised me because, uh, like I said, I I love it. It's so much fun. I love judging online. I love judging in person, and I can't see where I would want to get certified and then not want to be involved mm. in this wonderful game. Mm -hmm. I think that because there's a lot of people that don't that don't want to be a, don't want to do any events they just you know they just want to have that title they want to be certified and i think that surprised me a lot mm -hmm. i've talked enough so i'm please i was gonna say matt you were gonna say something <laughs> yeah i was gonna uh i'll pay back on that too for uh josh uh a lot of people that they want the title but they don't they just they just want to be a judge to be a for the title they don't mm -hmm. want to judge yeah um the biggest surprise for me though as being a judge is getting like all these random judge calls and it's basic interactions um i know yeah. that's a big one we we, we do get a lot of simple rules we, we get a simple a lot of simple judge calls but it's just like it surprised me when like this this car has been out since bt1 this interaction has been known since bt1 mm. and these it, players they've been playing for maybe that long or even if they picked it up a year ago it's something that's been so ingrained and it's like how do you like not know that mm -hmm. I, I think that's just the dinner from it um i will also pick it back on josh i just enjoy judging um i enjoy being able to walk around help people teach people get to talk to all the players see how they are feeling see how they're doing um and i just I also, my biggest thing, like I said earlier, with the playing versus judging question, I think being the judge helps you out so much as a player as well. Uh, -huh. yeah. uh Jarl, you got anything? I, I got something, but I want to, I want to go last because. 
I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess, like, I, I have to agree with Matt. It's just, like, how many people, like, ask about basic rulings? And it's like, we should, you like, you should know this. But it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, I, I, I do yeah. think, well, because I, I just want to hop in with mm -hmm. both of it. I think that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Like, some people just mm -hmm. want to double check. It, yeah, yeah, like, at any point you're not sure of something, that's what, again, what we're literally getting paid for. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's a, I'm fine with it, it's a simple interaction. It means it's an easy call and mm -hmm. you, yeah. you'll get to learn something at the end of the call. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's a bad thing to not know, like, some basic thing, like a simple interaction. Um, but it is surprising that there will be a lot of simple interactions, um, whether it can just be like, reading the card explains the card kind of thing which doesn't always happen in digimon but yeah. it, it could be something like can i do this and the card is like i'm trying to think of an example it'll be like target one of your points digimon uh, it can't suspend <laughs> like can i choose a tamer with this no it's just choose a digimon just, <laughs> yeah um but but it happens and you shouldn't feel bad about calling a judge in those situations yeah that's, that's all i wanted no. to add mm -hmm. i don't want anyone to feel no. bad about calling for a simple mm -hmm. situation no no yeah that's yeah. definitely not, not what i was trying to convey yeah right right, yeah. right 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 so um yeah I no mean, my oh yeah <laughs> no i was sorry. gonna say my, my <laughs> thing the reason why i wanted to go last yeah. uh is because there are some massive cons to judging there are there are some downsides and i it would be bad to not these guys all make great points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the upsides are amazing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The community is great, but first off, if you even think you want to, do it at your locals first. You know, mm -hmm. just try and help out at your locals because a big thing is going to be interacting between people, and some people don't have strong people skills, soft skills. That's okay. Not everybody has good soft skills, and there's something you can learn. Mm -hmm. Um, but also in in-person events, um, I love them. The energy is amazing. You will be on your feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you will be on your feet for 12 to 16 hours. The feet will die at the end of yeah. You will, it will hurt. Um, yeah. but I would not trade in my experience and time judging for anything. Um, I, I love this community. I do this out of my love for the community out of wanting it to be a good community mm -hmm. and on top of that if you want to be a judge and especially if you want to be a good judge you need to make sure that you are always trying to hold up the pillars of the community and being a pillar mm -hmm. um which is just it's extra stress you know um please don't let that dissuade you but just keep it in mind yeah, uh, I like I like that a lot because at the end of the day, especially if you are a judge who's who is being going like judging multiple events or become or or be or do our words are hard. Um, <laughs> when you become more active, um, you are still resent like it's something we get told at events. Like when, when we have a judge shirt on, we're we are representing Digimon, we're representing Bandai, mm -hmm. and you have to be aware of that. It, that goes outside of just an event too. Like there are so many community discords, right? There's Digimon 2020, which is massive. There's so many. And you still have to be aware of what you're saying and how you present yourself because you're still, even while you're not working at an event, you're still at, at its core uh, representing Bandai, representing play, um, representing just being a Digimon judge. Yeah. And for better or worse. Need, for better or worse. And you, should, you need to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, just for sure. It, th thank you for adding that, Jamie. <laughs> like, I, I, I personally do think that's a big thing where if if a judge is out there and someone that people well know and they're saying something completely off the walls right um people will take notice and that's a big thing yeah yeah like the whole judge program oh no I was, no you're good you're good i mean i was gonna i i'm basically like repeating everyone's sentiments it's like you know we all we all do this for the, for the passion of the game you know it's it's not like we do it for anything else, really. Um, I mean, Judge Comp is nice, but, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yes, we'll there is that. Judge Comp. We'll, we'll but... talk about this later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like we, we've talked about advice for people trying to be a judge. Um, and I do like, you know, start at your local scene. You know, start, you know, just helping out and just doing what you can there. And then, you know, building up to, like, you know, actually, like, taking the judge test and doing all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, Next one is from Nam in the Discord. Uh, are the local scenes full of good folks, or were there in some cases bad apples? If yes, could you retell a story of a judge called gone wrong? 
which I mean, we we are we are located in different areas. So I mean, as far as like your local scene goes, like, um, have you encountered something like this or like, you know, the experience? I don't know. I'm in Iowa. I have like <laughs> six locals. I have. Uh, I'm sorry. I have six local players. <laughs> um, no, I haven't had a problem with my locals. There are six of us. Yeah. Um, I, I'm in South Florida and there's lots of locals. There's lots of stories for Digimon down here. Mm. Um, between like, like even like an hour away is PPG, right? And there's tons of players there. Uh, we, I, I can't think off my head if there of any like bad apples that I can recall. Um, or like a judge call gone wrong at a locals. Cause mm. at the end of the day, locals are usually pretty casual or good, you know? Yeah. Um, I haven't had any bad experiences personally, but there are they, there are there are bad apples out there, right? Like, mm. it's it's still a card game, and people are human, and not everywhere is going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, I love my locals, uh, but I can't. So I can't think of anyone that I off the top of my head of that's a bad apple that I know. Mm. Unfor uh, well, thankfully, I guess not. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like for for me, it's like you know, obviously based in Illinois. Um, so I have like you know the suburbs Digimon scene, and then like Digimon scene of. You know people that are actually like centralized in chicago and like you know north of that ish northeast ish um so we've got like two separate local scenes but like um at least you know mine is like you know we're all good friends we we are competitive but you know we know how to like chill and we're not we're not like overly sweaty or anything like that um but i mean as far as like bad apples go like i i do i have heard of like a couple like horror stories from like my friends and stuff like that um but it's like those players they tend to come and go they don't stick around you know mm -hmm um so if it's like you know someone's like you know making a ruckus in the community it's like you know like i said they don't they tend not to stick around especially they tend to get ousted exactly oh i i we did have someone who got caught cheating once oh. and um, <laughs> we never saw them again so that that aired it out really quickly mm. at your local i don't add a local say if you're cheating that's at a local insane. it's like Ooh. that's wild I am but, buddy. some people are um, like that um but that happened like a year like a long time ago and yeah once it was caught we never saw that person again mm. yeah uh, <laughs> so this okay, one my locals, oh yeah yeah uh i said oh, yeah. my locals was good. <laughs> um it's been very good for a while i will say there was a bad apple uh we had probably i think it was the first or second band player um oh jesus cheated in a regional and Oof. yeah so he got caught and got banned and other than that it's very good um i know i'm in vegas here so uh we have that uh if anyone remembers the first very first nat brian doe uh he's I love brian. Vegas I local. um he's pretty much he he moved on he wants to come back to digimon but he doesn't have the time i would love he's to on one piece as well so <laughs> uh but no our locals is, is packed not as packed as like uh josh with florida or like <laughs> illinois so we don't have the the, the we have some of the strong players, but <laughs> way more to beat, though. <laughs> Please come uh, to Iowa. Um, <laughs> so uh, there was something else I wanted to add because it was just talking about the local scenes full of good people. Mm. Um, at least from my personal experience, I do truly believe that for TC at TCGs, Digimon is the best community I've ever I've ever seen. Um, yeah. When it comes to like playing Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic. Um, I don't think I've seen a more welcoming community, like to new players, to existing people. Um, even people like Mongols get very sweaty. We, like it's it's top meta all the time. It's mm. well, I'll try to play a fun deck, whatever. But even then, they're not sweaty players. Like everyone's yeah. still very welcoming, and like they try to help each other get better as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really refreshing for Digimon, um, because I've tried playing like Magic a handful of places or some other some other card games and a lot of communities are not welcoming they're not friendly like you don't feel you feel almost out of place sometimes but digimon is it's like it's it's the best <laughs> i love i love the digimon community but i i imagine y'all also what is it <laughs> Our toxicity levels is the lowest. Yeah, our toxicity <laughs> was, like literally the lowest. Like, yeah, there's bad apples out there, but like the Digimon community is amazing. What do you yeah. mean? If you're yeah. playing Psycon, you're automatically toxic, right? 
Listen, <laughs> hold on. Oh, okay, oh, listen. Oh. To two control no. players in this call. No, so, <laughs> so we don't that, go that that crazy all your blue gun. Yeah. <laughs> all your friends are gonna give you shit twenty four seven. That's all it means. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> so this next one is kind of like a joint question. It's from, it is from two different people, but they are related. Um, so we've got Radical Riot or Ryan from the Discord, and then Saiyan Blitz. Um, were there any ruling situation or slash situations you encounter very rarely that you couldn't remember uh, slash had to jog your memory for? And then were there any rulings you had to look up again if you didn't remember on hand? Which I think to start off on this one, it's like. Um, like we mentioned, the Bandai Organized Play server has that rulings discussions Discord or like ruling question thread. And if we don't know anything, we will immediately go to that. Like aside outside of like asking our our like our, the judges that are on duty at that time, our team. Our team. Um, we will go directly to that and like directly to Q and A's if we don't remember anything. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, it, it happens. We don't remember every card every mm -hmm. single time. Um, and yeah. sometimes you just have a brain fart. Like. It, it, it just happens sometimes. You'll be looking at a card, you'll know what it does, and then you'll be like, is is, is that how that works? Yeah. And then maybe you'll just, just need to ask a friend or like mm -hmm. like one of your team members and refresh. You want to say something, Jamie? You just look very... Right. I, I was just going to say, I mean, y'all can speak for yourselves. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> That's a lie. Um, no, oh, wow. I've, I've missed my fair share of things. Um... I, I feel very strong conceptually, which does just help me naturally tend to help me out. Mm -hmm. As long as I can get to read the card text, it's a lot easier for me. Yeah. But um, no, I've absolutely forgotten things. Uh, let's see. Uh, EX4 Geo Greymon on stream. Robo was pinging me about that. That was <laughs> funny. Um, and just it, it, it was mostly the things that were like weird one offs, like shine Greymon burst mode with keenan crier on the opposing side oh yeah i remember, I remember um mm -hmm. there was it's on i forgot which event it was but it's on a stream where we saw a matchup was like devas versus like door like an x antibody deck so they're playing cool boy and we talked about it before and we're like all right this is the only time the monkey is going i forgot his name the the monkey um deva this is the only time it's ever going to come up so keep an eye on it and it popped up on stream and it was forgotten about and it happens <laughs> it just yeah. like things are rare it, what the monkey does is if you have a two cost tamer it can't suspend but how often does that come up um things happen i mean is an analog no, I, should that monkey, I should put that monkey in my galactic mon deck what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but with analog your monkey's probably gonna die when the analog pops yeah. or something mm. um, or get deleted not die yeah yeah but <laughs> but yeah, it happened with Cool Boy, and it just, it, um, while they, let's see, I'm trying to reread the question, I had to look up, but, <laughs> well, not, there's not specific rulings, just, it happens, everybody has to look up something sometimes, or just needs a refresher, yep. yeah. yeah, you can't remember I'll everything, say, uh, go Darrell ahead, Darrell and I had one, Jarell and I had one in, uh, at, at Dallas, um, he had a judge call, it was about Mirage and Tokens, oh, yeah, I love tokens. And, yep. That was so much fun, guys. He called me because I was walking by and he's like, hey, this, this is how it works. I was like, it should. And I was like, you know what? Just to double check, let's check the Discord. Mm -hmm. Um, So Mirage bounces a token. You don't gain the memory for the all turns effect because a card was not mm -hmm. physically added to yep. the location. But you did pay the cost of bouncing a level five or lower yeah. so you don't add the security. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a, exactly. that's a big thing. That's a fun one. So, so many long discussions <laughs> about tokens and like the judge chat. Where yeah, they they fulfill costs, but they don't count as adding to an area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I think I let a lot of those because I hate tokens. <laughs> Token, as yeah. a Diabora monster, I love it. Oh jeez. <laughs> um Lord, next one is another joint question uh also from radical riot and then uh this is uprising on youtube is um have there any be been any situations where things escalated because of a ruling um from like player to player or player to judge interactions that led to disagreements um and then what is the best way you think to deal with two irate players in the middle of a match how do you try to keep everyone cool um have you had any experiences with this no nothing specific comes to mind well actually <laughs> um, oh, yeah. this is a weird one because like we can't discuss like things like penalties or stuff like that regards mm. regarding to events 
Um, but I have seen several or had experienced several issues of players in disagreement or in disagreements or fighting, whether it be online or in person. Um, I know when I first started, I tried letting like people like, you know, just let it out um because sometimes people need to vent and then they'll calm down but you also need to be able to realize like especially if it's a judge call right um you still have to do you have to fix this or resolve this in a timely manner yeah and honestly sometimes you just need to raise your like nip into the butt raise the voice tell them that hey so and so might happen if this continues we need to we need to get uh finish this we need to continue with play and um it it happens and you really have to be i think more recently you have to be stern involving it um <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but that because it does a big thing at the end of the day we want everyone to have a good time whatever to have fun mm. um and those disagreements will happen and it's, it's usually a case by the face case by case by basis of what's happening and who's who's ag- who's being the aggressor um you just have to find that balance of nipping in the butt, whether it be being stern, letting someone vent, or whatever it is in that moment, but you can't let it drag on. You have to, you know, pull rank, like, hey, I can't let this continue. Mm-hmm. We yeah. need to stop. If this continues, <laughs> this is what's going to happen. And you have to put your foot down. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's the best method of doing it. Because like I said, I, when I first started, I tried doing like the vent thing and it didn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. You it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. You have to be, you have to put your foot down and tell, because that's it. They, you're in an event, there's time counting down. You don't want to give a large time extension. You want to resolve it. And you have to make the players clear. You have to make it clear what's going to happen if it continues. Mm-hmm. But again, when it comes to any kind of specific situation, um, we can't really talk about things that happened like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that definitely uh, depends. Um, and I know a lot of it, at least, you know, from the stuff that we've run into, is like a lot of it's like he said, she said scenarios where we weren't present for this so we don't know exactly what happened you know so it's yeah. it's definitely tough to deal with situations like that but i mean please rec- if you are playing online <laughs> in an online regional in an online ultimate cup you know what you should do record your games now very important very you do that does not give you permission to publish said recordings of other people but right. you should always protect yourself and record your games for while you are playing whether it be especially online right Mm -hmm. because then if we do run into a he said she said moment or something happened we have footage to review and that saves us so much it is incredible please always record again not permission to submit not permission to publish don't go my opponent did this and start putting it all over youtube you need permission (laughs) from your opponent to stream you need your opponent's permission to publish Mm-hmm. Um, but you can record for personal use. Yes. Uh, do that. I will say on that too, um, with like maintaining and e- what you can do to help de-escalate is you yourself remain calm. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you get emotionally charged, it just feeds into the fire. Yeah. Um, you do need to, you do have to take charge of the situation. You have to remain calm. Um, what I found helps a lot too, uh, especially if a player is like very upset, bring them back to the moment. Right now you're playing a card game. Mm-hmm. You need to finish out this round. Please come speak to me after the round. It, if it's like a disagreement, right? No. Um, but also like, unfortunately this will happen. So one time, da- sometime down the road, it will happen. Um, if it gets, if you are a floor judge, if it gets out of hand and you cannot handle it, call your head judge immediately. Yeah. If you are a head judge and it is too big for you to handle, TO and security. Um, especially, especially in an in-person. Hopefully it never gets there, but it will. (laughs) Um, and just, you know, bring them back to the moment. Let them know that you can speak after the match about the problem that will also help because it helps people feel that they are heard um we we're not here to ignore people but especially as josh said in a call we we got to resolve this right now like yeah you two you two got to stop arguing play the game um i've sat on a table for an entire game to ensure that they stayed 
pleasant to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and like it was just, guys, we're playing a game. This is a card game. Yeah. We are all adults here. <laughs> please remind, please remind yourselves of that. Yeah. Um, and then it simmered down. I had a conversation with that player after the game, but obviously, like, I can't speak to that. So. Yeah. I, I, I've had that happen where then when you get to talk to them, I've had people message me after an event like, hey, thanks for resolving what so-and-so issue. And like, I really like when that happens. It makes me feel yeah. good. <laughs> sure. Um, jumping off that, going into the next one. Uh, if you're at Locals and someone tries to be a prick in Rule Shark, how do you handle it? Uh, this is from Stream in the Discord. Um, I mean, locals. I, I, locals is different than premier events for sure. Um, but like rule sharking is, and and I know I think we've talked about it a little bit in the past. Um, because there there is rule sharking, and then there is borderline misinterpreting information to become rule sharking. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um so uh, real quick, for a textbook definition for anybody not familiar with rule sharking who is listening to this video. Mm -hmm. Rule sharking is intentionally using the rules in a way to gain an advantage over your opponent that you should not have. Mm -hmm. um, which would be something like calling a judge to try to get them a penalty that that you should have called that judge three turns ago. Yeah. Um, but that is an example of rule sharking. Uh, if that happens at my locals, I... Oh, I hit that so quick. No, we're not doing this, guys. <laughs> no. I think I think like the one of the main examples one is like or main examples of like someone trying to rule shark is like Ukumon. It's like if they do the effect or if they like hatch the egg then do the effect. It, we're like promo Ukumon, for example, yeah. was a big one. Um the hunters uh saving before deletion was another really big one that people would do yeah. where yes in a permanent event it's correct uh technically you are right you need to order the order effects correctly like if you're playing ukom if you're playing promo ukomon you need to make sure you hatch and then gain a memory for example um you can't gain if, because if you gain the memory the hatch is first on the effect and it's optional so you would essentially given up the effect to hatch mm -hmm. same thing back when hunters was a big deck <laughs> if you material saved first you gave up the on deletion draw effect um mm -hmm. and that was a big rule sharking part where technically an improvement again they are correct but when you're using those situations in order not because you're not calling a judge because it was out of order but because you're intentionally trying to give your opponent a penalty yeah. for the issue that's when you're rule sharking and cut that's that not allowed like yeah. what yeah cut that out like you're not doing that if um yeah. a big one was when we had that rule to present where your players needed to present tokens for example oh, yeah. almost every almost every online event i judged we had someone who called about my opponent didn't give me didn't show me his tokens he should not be allowed and this should happen no it's not your job to do penalties yeah you you did the right thing by calling us we're gonna handle it um but you shouldn't be calling a judge in order to force some kind of de uh advantage on mm -hmm. your like for yourself up on against your opponent yeah that's yeah. just it's not acceptable and if you do that at a local level that's also it, that, that's like insane. that's that's, that's worse um, being annoying that's so yeah. much worse yeah. like um because people are expected to play correctly in a premier event so yes mm -hmm. it is the correct call to call a judge as long as you're not trying to seek seek a penalty yeah, um, yeah. it's when you're seeking that that is when the issue com comes into into mm -hmm. play um Go ahead, Jerome. I was gonna say, thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. Nobody has to present tokens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank yeah. God! God, that's gone. Oh, that led just so many yeah. fun things. Um, I will say, it was yeah. objectively correct to present tokens, no matter what, even if you weren't playing them. <laughs> while we had to do that, yeah. it was yeah. objectively correct. Yeah. It was objectively yeah. correct. <laughs> um, but yeah. then going back to the idea of like borderline misinterpreting, and then it becomes like rule sharking is like. Um, I think one example we talked about previously, it was like, hey, uh, do you have any blockers on board? No? Okay, swing, redirect. And it's that like... Is my... I think literally my biggest pet peeve with Digimon, or just the game, is when players do that. Yeah. Um, you should never... There should never be a haha got you kind of moment in mm -hmm. the game, and you win because of it. Because you are supposed to properly um, represent the game state. You're supposed to properly 
explain the, all of the effects that are on board that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and what a player might do is, oh, well, this didn't do anything right. Like, I'll play a Digimon that has maybe an on-play effect and an on-deletion effect. Well, the on-deletion effect doesn't matter right now, so I'll just say, well, on-play it does this. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. And then when the on-deletion comes up or when it's asked, I will bring it up. Mm -hmm. That's not correct. You would pr play the card and you would describe what effects you currently have. Or, yeah. And then if it's if you've already done it, sure, you don't have to keep reminding them, but you have to you have to properly um, mm -hmm. explain, explain, I mean, not explain, but yeah. like, explain the card, but like, I'm trying to think of the word for it. When you're you, explaining the game state, um, you have provide, to convey. You have to yeah. properly convey the game state and what your cards are doing. Please don't, oh, no, I don't have any blockers or, um, yeah. and then, uh, Oh, I have a redirect. You know what they were asking. Like yeah. that that's ah. that's not cool. Or I had an issue once where someone um they asked clearly, hey, what's the DP of your Digimon, right? Oh yeah. Um, or if I'm swinging, you know, what's the DP here? Oh, it's it's blank. And then they go, okay, I'll swing. Oh, I oh actually I have an inherit or whatever, and that now I have plus two K. Mm -hmm, like, yeah. don't do that. Don't be that person. Yeah. Um it it skirts the line so well in certain situations where it's iffy, but I think that is. I I cannot stand it personally. I no. Yeah, no. I'm barely. I'm, I'm very irritated by this that entire situation. <laughs> no, uh, for yeah. Sure. My my thing on that too is um, yeah. When you play a card or when you digivolve into a card, you don't have to read the entire text. Uh, you. I think Josh and I might differ a little bit here. Okay. I don't think you necessarily need to say everything the on delete's going to do but at the very least you need to make your opponent aware that that digimon has an on deletion mm -hmm. yeah. because that changes everything um if you haven't said what that on deletion does at some point you do need to convey that before the deletion happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah there's no gotcha moments you you we're not holding our opponent's hands to help them make the best play line mm -hmm. But there's a difference between holding your opponent's hand and putting a blinder on their eyes and asking them to walk a line. Yeah. 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 I, I think, like, on the opposite end of that, too, it's, like, it's one thing to ask a question and then your opponent, like, intentionally, like, misinterprets the information. It's another yeah. thing to just not ask the question at all. Um, yeah. yeah. Because, like, you'll swing and be like, oh, he had blocker well you know there goes the game or like you know there goes that what i was trying to yeah. do um it's like it's nice you know again going back to the blocking thing like ask questions like it it doesn't hurt to ask your opponent questions but then again it's another thing for your opponent to be like well i don't have a blocker and then just not say anything about redirects or like you know stuff like it's similar situations so and and also private versus public information mm -hmm. um it is a correct thing if you are holding um, I think Shadow Seraphi Ace has blocker, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have Shadow Seraphi Ace in your hand, mm. and you have a level 5 that you can blast into it. If your opponent asks, do you have any blockers? Obviously, the correct answer is no. Yeah. Um, what I always recommend is take a start taking a, a stance of saying, at this time, there is no this type of effect i don't have any blockers or redirects at this time mm -hmm. currently so currently, yeah, yeah. With, with that jamie i do think something like shadows rock which is perfect like it's like it being a blocker is entirely private mm -hmm. um i would say yeah like right now i don't have any blockers there's no blockers on the field mm -hmm. but like let's say they're playing against deva and it's any I'm of the black devas that are, any of the black <laughs> devas are on the field all of them have inherited blocker yeah you do need turn, to bring up that and yeah. your, your opponent says, do you have any blockers or anything that can block on your field? And you say, no, I have no blockers. And then you ace and any of the ones can turn, everything on your field can become a blocker because they have a blocker inherit and you've never stated that they have inherited blocker. Yeah. That's intentionally like uh, not providing information. Yeah. yeah, and again, that is public information. So yes, 100%, you do need to make it aware yeah. what can become relevant. And I mean, now you don't have to keep reminding your opponent that it has no. the inherited. But yeah. you have to make it clear at least once that, hey, this mm -hmm. Digimon has inherited blocker. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. Like, I would say that, that goes back, hey, I'm going to play this, like uh, uh, the Katuramon. Okay, I'm playing this Katuramon. It has blocker, inherited blocker. Cool. You did it the first time you played the card. There you go. Yeah. And that's like, all you need to do. Two or three turns later, yeah. 
You have it's still sitting there somehow, or you played another one. It's a Katuramon. It's the same thing. And mm. they you say they ask that question like, hey, do you have any blockers or anything? It's like, cool. No, I do not have any blockers. You don't have to remind them of that inherited effect because you announced it already when you played the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there. As, as long as you conveyed it, that's all you needed yep. to do. Mm. Yeah. Again, we don't need to hold our opponent's hands. We don't need to give them the correct playline. Yeah. Um, but you do need to provide them mm. the yeah. information that they are by the book entitled to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's another thing. It's like um, to like kind of sidebar a little bit um, with stuff like aces and then like those having blockers. It's like if somebody asks you for the card text, like obviously you shouldn't say it if you have it in your hand. Don't look at your hand and be like, well, this has this. Um, you do have rain to like call judge over so they can basically become do oracle text or like, you know, so they can recite the text for you. Um, yeah. Because some players will actually like misremember effects of cards and then, you know, and then stuff goes yeah. south and you know, like I said, also, small, small double sidebar. check your trash. Double check the trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. It could be the trash. Yeah. Um, Just take two seconds. Uh, <laughs> let me double check. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Trash yeah. is public. Yeah. Like I said, small sidebar, uh, kind of related, but yeah. Um, oh. Next one is from Shields. Uh, Alex, one of my local guys uh, on the Discord. Um, what is the most rewarding part of being a judge? Um, because it seems like it's taxing slash underappreciated. So I wonder uh, what drives or motivates people to judge, which I think the latter part we've, we have touched on with one of the previous questions, but like um, rewarding part is, you know, like Jamie mentioned, we do get judge comp, you know, most of the time it's just entry for the tournament. It's nothing much more like than it's, that. It's usually participation and then participation. Um, yeah. it's what, judge 10, packs. it's 10 judge packs? Judge for, packs, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not, I don't even know the number, man. But <laughs> I, think yeah. it's, I, yeah. I could be, I could be misremembering. I believe it's 10, um, it, it's 10 judge participation packs. and 10 judge packs. Yeah. yeah. There you go. But Which, like, that's, that's, I want to say the four of us here, that's not what we do it for. Oh, <laughs> no, I'll say at least no, the yeah, four yeah. of us here. The real reason is the community, is 100% the community. Community. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Because what was the wording on the question? What is the most important part of being a rewarding part? Yeah. Yeah. Getting to shoot the shit with all the players. <laughs> yeah. the yeah. Yeah. I get to walk around and be like, oh, I remember there was the, I think it was, uh, oh my god, was it, was it Gen Con? I loved this guy so much. He's like playing um, uh, Armadillo uh, Armadillo Armors. And I remember I walked by him and he goes, all right, and I'm going to Evo into another sheepy. Mm. And now my two sheepies are going to combine their power and shock them. <laughs> I love that dude. I don't know your name, but my favorite it, just walk around seeing the wild decks too yeah yeah uh, not yeah. everyone brings the top decks and we get to see we get to see the creative uh same thing at Gen Con. there was a there was a ace mother deck oh my god i remember oh, that, that. So cool. <laughs> like ace mother like this it was before just shoto. <laughs> yeah before shoto came out because yeah. this was back in oh august they, yeah so they were using there was also a blocker one that was using astral snatcher to yeah. um put um, the Bogger army and Blocker inherits under their mothers. It yeah. was so cool. That's good. Like getting and then getting oh, to talk God. with those players afterwards. It's it's so rewarding just being able to oh. just being part of the community. I think that's literally yeah. the best part. Mm. Ah, I, I mean, that. that might be the best part for you guys. Uh, <laughs> I get to finally get out of Iowa some like two or three times a year. No <laughs> travel. Getting <laughs> out of Florida, very valid point. Not being in a swamp. Very valid point. But, uh, hey, we're going to be in a swap this year. Yeah, we are. Hey, <laughs> at least it's during January, which uh, winter in Florida isn't is, I'll it's, it's not that bad. It's November. Why am I so hot in November right now? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I, I think my favorite deck that I ever saw was actually at LA Nats. Um, I wish I had actually asked you your name. I hope you see this video. Whoever was <laughs> playing that Bagra army, that oh Bagramon, Darkest Bagramon deck, King. <laughs> the fact that uh so on that one, my uh assistant team, had right? judged at the time. Huh? They got top sixteen, right? Or was it just they, top four? Yeah, yeah. They were they were top, they were top cut. Yeah. They, top, they, yeah. they were top sixteen top cut. It was crazy. Top 16. Um but uh my my assistant head judge was like, you sit there. And I was like, Yes, sir. So I sit down and uh his opponent and me. Every time he played a card, his opponent would go, can I read that card? And I'm sitting there like searching my phone going like, what is this card? <laughs> I've never seen Bangerman. What, what am so I? Be like, his opponent goes, can I see the card? He goes, yeah, he handed the card and said, can I? 
Can I see that card? See the card after? <laughs> One of my friends likes to say there there is a factor to every deck called the what does your deck do factor. Yeah. <laughs> that will like completely throw people off and they'll just win games. It's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, what does your yeah. deck do? Uh, but yeah, so that was that was hilarious because it was just like the entire game. It was obviously once my phone started to kick in faster, uh, I didn't have to ask for his cards, but it was very funny for like three <laughs> cards in a row. Hey, what's that do? Okay, me. Yeah, okay. Can I beat that because I'm stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, next one up here is um, another one of my locals, Ante, um, and this one we're starting to d dive into the YouTube post questions. Um, thoughts on matches going into time slash draws and stalling, which slow, stalling slash slow play we have touched on, but just thoughts on matches so, going into time. So um, there's two things. One again is the slow play issue where at any point, if you feel like the match um, timer, have the match timer open, please, always. Yes, um, please. <laughs> please. Please, 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 always have the timer open so you're not caught off guard. Um, we give it but, to you. Please use it. <laughs> please use it. But if you ever feel like the tempo isn't right, call the judge. You need to do it. It's, we can only help if we're there. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I do think some a big thing in Digimon, from what I've seen in players, is people do not respect the scoop to go next. And I think oh, yeah. a lot of people will continue to play out a clearly lost game or a losing game mm -hmm. um when they need to scoop in or and to in order to make the comeback for winning the next two games mm -hmm. or they play out and they draw out a game where they know like for sure you've lost you do not have an out but you're continuing to play it out mm -hmm. you normally will hit that point where you realize i'm probably going to lose this yeah. but the longer you take to get to that point Mm -hmm. um where you lose you're just eating away at the timer and yeah. because you're losing that game now your opponent's up a game now if you did take too much time your only options are draw or lose mm -hmm. and i think players need to respect the scoop you'll see it a lot in like um with a lot of like high, le high level players yeah um where they'll be like we're just gonna go next because you know you know when the if your opponent's about to go full combo with takamika right and you know for sure there is nothing in your security that will save you like you know they're not gonna stop mm -hmm. go next like yeah. like it you need to do you need to be aware of the timer and be respectful of your own time in mm -hmm. order to avoid those situations yeah. or your main you just don't care you play off the game anyway. <laughs> yeah. and, and when you get the tie you're like cool now that's or, that's or you're like me and play beal star and everyone's like what does your deck do <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, I also play Beal Star. We are not the same. Yours is better. Oh, Matt, was no. it Matt? Was it you that went like undefeated in a tournament because you didn't have a single loss? It was all ties. Uh, I started off this last regional one oh three. <laughs> one win, zero loss, and three ties. <laughs> undefeated king. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's so, like um. It happens. What is it? Um, yeah, I think that's a skill that definitely like gets you. You start learning more as you start playing more is like knowing when to scoop. Um, the other thing is like uh, I think a lot of players like um, they underestimate the overtime rules because um, the big thing I see <laughs> a lot is um, <clears throat> people will be like, well, I have game on board and it's the end of the overtime five minutes. And it's like sucks. You weren't in the middle of an attack to finish the game. Therefore, the game ends in a draw. Yeah. yeah, that's like, constant. I see that yeah. too much when you go with like overtime is oh, the time in overtime is called. We have to go to the table so we have to tell people to stop playing. Mm -hmm. And we see maybe, yeah, maybe you have 10 Digimon on board. Your opponent has two security left. You didn't swing and it's over. Mm -hmm. The Turn time is up. There's, there's nothing yeah. we can do in that situation. The timer is done. Yeah. And people need to respect that in overtime. That's like have the timer up. Look at what you can do. I've seen people throw because rather than turn sideways, they're autopiloting through the rest of their turn, and now the timer's up, and all they have to do is attack. Yeah. Please turn card sideways. It'll turn it'll save sideways. you. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> you have five sideways. Digimon. They have two security. Turn card sideways. Wait, stop! Yep. Stop autopiloting. Go. Do, do it. Do yeah. you need to go into Omnimon Ace right now? Turn card sideways. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, ah. But yeah, it happens. That, yeah. that just happens. Mm. Uh, next one is from Adam Bomb Diggity on YouTube. <laughs> um, design an archetype slash what mechanics would you like to see in a game? Like design an archetype, it could be like an existing adding on to an existing one. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. so I really want self DP minus. Because oh. I have the dumbest deck idea. What's what's your play here? So Lusamon Larva says that Digimon with zero DP cannot be deleted if you have a colored Lusamon on field. So what you do is you get Lusamon Larva, four of the is it starter deck Lotmons that give something alliance? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Four of what those. You, zero DP? You, you give you give <laughs> four stacks of alliance to Lusamon Larva. You swing, suspend all four Lotmons to give it alliance, and then you know, it, if I had, if I had my dream, zero, and zero it's, DP, everything's five at zero. <laughs> zero, zero DP, DP five deck. checks can't be deleted. Oh my zero god! Zero DP, Doug. Um, the the main thing that I've I've brought this up before in like friend groups and stuff. Um, Digivices are not in the game yet. It would be cool to see Digivices. Um in like as like you know how one piece has their leaders and they will start at specific life values based on the leader and then it'll have like effects and stuff um mm -hmm. having digivices kind of be like that one piece leader where you can have like an, a, a passive effect throughout the game but like your security total will change you know interesting kind of like a field spell but not not exactly yeah i think that would be cool um to add like another spin to the game as far as like you know again adding digivices because we don't have anything like that so, we don't have yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the past, my answer was going to be face up security, but that already happened. You got that now, yeah. I really yeah, like face up security. I think that's a really cool mechanic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people are going to hate me, but uh, we need Atmon. Um, <laughs> I need Atmon in the card game. Uh, I don't care what the archetype does. Just give me Glo just give me Gotchmon. Um, There's know, dozens maybe? of you. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Just end it here. We're done. We're done. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the video's over. I, I, I love that. I love that mod. Uh, I don't know what it could be. Do you give it some neat, cool mechanic? Um, I really like, for example, the uh, how we like the new Gundam TCG is like the pilots that are also option cards. Yeah, the bases are cool the bases are cool. Yeah, maybe we yeah. could have kind of some kind of neat like new like how we have delay options. Maybe we could have some other kind of new split card for Digimon that can maybe be fulfill two kind of requirements. Yeah. Um, but I also want them to stop printing security effects that say activate main. Uh, I want them to stop printing things that say ignore protection. the memory gauge. No, yeah, protection's yeah, fine. Yeah. Ignore the memory gauge. <laughs> Just ignore the memory protection gauge. needs to be more. I, oh, so I'll hop in here now too. Mm. Are, are you done, Josh? <laughs> Let me see. Are you done, Josh? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to talk about Atmon, yeah. That's fair. Right. <laughs> Cut <him> so, off. <laughs> I want. Uh, Josh going to hate me for this. This one. I've said it. I said it to him numerous times. I want to see sideboards try it again at least. Sure. Sideboards would be better. Uh, it would make our the game better, and it would. It, it was tested in a time when it wasn't fully needed. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. we didn't have enough cards. We didn't have a gi enough card pool. Now we have a giant card pool. Mm -hmm. Like, and it doesn't need to be ten cards. Uh, I think ten for fifty was a uh, too much. It should be like six to eight. Six to eight card sideboard is what I would like to see right again. I, I agree um, with the sentiment. I think uh, when they when they tried the five card, I think that's like the good spot is five cards exactly. Oh, you weren't. Oh, Jarrell, you no, were I was, here when they I, first no, I was did not, the no, ten I was card. Not. So the ten I had, card was funny. Like at Digifest, I definitely had my sideboard come up a lot. Um, but I feel like at least back then, right? It made the better that the good decks better. It didn't necessarily make the worst decks viable. It just increased the power of the what was good. Mm, yeah. Um, I feel like with Digimon specifically, we have very specific cards, like Floodgates, for example, right? And I don't. Those put me put a damper on me for wanting sideboards because mm. of how specific certain cards are in Digimon, right? If you know you don't need to bring Psychmon to a game, you don't need to play Psychmon. Mm -hmm. um and that's a great sideboard card which then okay i am matching into the demon lord player let me throw my four psych mon in and that alone is a huge it's a huge oh, boost no. in that matchup right <laughs> brother <laughs> four <laughs> Fuck it. Okay, that's <laughs> but, that's no, taking that's, up consistency. It's taking yeah. up your sideboard spots. So yeah. it's taking up your sideboard spot, right? But that means you are not playing a card that doesn't do anything no longer in your main deck for more consistency. And then having that when you need it. Um, but I don't I, I'm a bad deck builder. I'm not a fan of sideboards. <laughs> That's my thing. I'm also a Megazoo I mean, player. I don't I want say, everyone Josh, to have so, Josh plays all the gimmick decks, all the Megazoo decks. 
Like yeah, all the all, yeah, all the all the cross decks, all the <laughs> all the silly <laughs> decks I play, and I don't think they're gonna make my decks better. I think they're gonna make everyone else. Yeah, because here's the thing: yeah. every single one of the decks you play says I lose to Psychmon. I lose to <laughs> yeah, Psychmon, and I don't give it. I want you to have to make the decision to put it in your main deck. And if you match into me, sure, you you have a Psychmon. But if you don't match into me, there you have a useless rookie. Enjoy it. It's not a useless rookie. Though. It's not a useless it's rookie. Okay. But I will say, I want <laughs> level four. Okay. Mm. I would like level. So, I do think I... Floodgates at level three. Um, they are very easy to remove for a lot of, obviously not my decks, but they're very easy for a lot of decks to remove, like the memory floodgates, for example. Yeah. Um, they, you can kind of breathe on them a lot of the time. Thank goodness Black finally has one that's not 1k, I think, right? Uh, Zenimon's finally above the 1k? I think, wasn't, um... Chumon's 1k, oh, cool. Ch- you're right. Chumon is 1k! Uh, yeah, but to Curry and I'm talking about memory uh, sprites. Oh, no, 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 that's, 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 that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I think Black finally. I think Zenny might not be one K. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, they get sneezed on. Like, there's so many effects that if you are in a deck that will gain memory, can usually just pop a rookie in between gaining your memory. And I do yeah. think something like a level four floodgate could remedy that. Um, maybe to slow the game, maybe to slow the tempo of the game down just a little bit. Um, but it would be hard. It'd be interesting to see how they would uh, implement that. You, you'd need to give it a lower DP stat line, but yeah. I also maybe maybe not a level four floodgate. The level three floodgates have the same inheritable as their turns. That way, it's still on the one card. It's not. Ah, I don't like that. Though. That's, that's too, too strong. Good. That's too good. <laughs> I don't. I don't know because that like the thing is they're, they're easy to pop, but if you give them a level four. They have to work more so it's still if they go to a level four you still have to go through the same process to leave that level four but i think your level four slot though is more important and takes more out of your deck so if it is a card that is harder to remove while doing the floodgate effect but you're losing your level four slot you're losing a slot that's way more important to your deck than a, than a rookie sometimes mm-hmm. you know and i think that's a, that could be a fair trade-off but i, I think I, I think either level four or give them 4k DP as a level three, um, because minus 3k is the standard at this point for DP reduction. Um, delete a level three, or it's either delete a level three, or it's delete a 3k or minus 3k. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if you down to level three, it, it starts. Yeah. Like... yeah. So like, that's why I'm advocating for the level four. And, and just give it a lower DP stat line. Like, still make it something that's not. Like, don't give it 6K. But give it like 4K. You know, like, give, give it, it like. Just above. Yeah. yeah, give it like 3 or 4K, just above that minus 3K so it survives. But, like, but it's not. It's level 4 to avoid the, the ease, uh, it being super yeah. easy to remove. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so also, then, if you're going to do it, no inheritable. No inheritable effect. No inheritable. It's yeah, a like, blank like, box. like, like it has to be. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it has to be. That's it. Yeah. Um, but now I will say time because now my Marcus won't remove your four, your uh, level it's four. It's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. Marcus. All the shiny stuff is free. You, you get the tamers. <laughs> it's all free. Um, yeah. I want to see. Also, uh, protection has gone. Has been ever since it's uh, included. They should have given each color a specific version of protection, mm. and then gone from there. Not just hey, here's this protection. So well, that's well they did, and then so, they made it bad. So, no, no, no. This has been a big talk, but I've seen various people talk about it recently. But red doesn't have a color identity anymore. It does. At all. Yeah. Okay, so hold on, I want to jump in on this <laughs> because <laughs> hello, resident red play here. Um, yep, and this yep, this kind of yep. this kind of ju- jumps into like what mechanics would you like to see in the game? Um, I one thing that I was talking about with some friends is like. I like you said, red doesn't have any like keyword that it belongs to them identity. anymore. Like, I guess raid, but like raid doesn't really do much. And um, raid isn't exclusive, I don't think. Is it? it is, is it still red it exclusive? Is. It's still, no, yeah. It's, a, yeah. Yeah, it's still red. Well, it's on like, um, cards. But I was thinking about like, what if red could, you know, circumvent deletion effects or like, you know, not trigger on deletion effects, stuff like that. Um, because red does like to do a lot of popping. Um, yeah. or it's like I, another, also the worst form of removal. Yeah. Another, <laughs> another suggestion I've seen is like more, um, more like if this, um, if this doesn't happen, then do this kind of stuff. 
Like, yeah. if you didn't delete, get yeah. another effect. Um, yeah. But I, I, one one thing I was thinking of is, like, if you... It's, like, um, like, a new keyword where it's, like, if you delete... You know, if you delete your opponent's Digimon in, like, battle or by effect... Um, probably by battle, because that's probably, like, easier for Red to do. Um, it's, like, you don't trigger... You don't trigger their protections, or, you, or they can't protect it, or they can't, like, trigger their own deletion. Something they like that. Effect, yeah. Something similar. Like, yeah. Like, honestly, giving Red more Floodgate effects could be cool. Like, how Crimson Blaze stops things. Yeah. Giving, making Red, like, a, a more of a aggressive Floodgate could be could mm -hmm. be a really fun way to do it, too. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> again, just had to jump in on that just because like I, I, I was also thinking about it as you guys were discussing like um like floodgates and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, um, moving on to the last couple of questions here, and then we can we can uh, sign off. <laughs> um, Samir nine seven two on YouTube asks um, if we can elaborate on interruptive effects because everyone seems to time these differently or like interpret it differently. Um, who wants to take well, this? First one? off, yeah. they're no longer uh, interruptive effects. They are immediate, immediate effects. effects. Yeah, that is the current, that um, is the correct now term for them. Yeah, um, people will still use uh, interruptive because it was it. That's what we were familiar with. But it is immediate now. Yeah. Um, they're usually uh, noticed on effects that say like would when this yeah. would happen. The, the big, the big keyword, off, but... the big keyword is definitely if the effect has the word would in it. Would. Yeah, that's when it's an immediate effect. Um, <laughs> but also like. <laughs> Well, <laughs> except for BT7 Dark Knight mod. <laughs> My that poor thing, this poor card. Yeah. Oh, um, oh lord. But another thing is like for immediate effects, it's like um this poor card. Like, <laughs> for immediate <laughs> effects, I think the second thing to know about those is aside from when the effect says wood, it's an immediate effect. Um, is knowing like when the effect actually activates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, oh, I would say um, a big thing is like they don't really is that an immediate effect is an effect that can happen in the middle of another effect or when an mm -hmm. effect is, is happening. Um, and if that immediate effect causes a new effect to trigger, there's not a trigger window during the immediate effect. It's going to wait for the immediate tech effect to finish, and then whatever the immediate effect interrupted, that also needs to finish resolving before whatever the new effect that came out of the yeah. immediate effect like loosemon is a great uh, chaos uh yeah loosemon yeah, chaos uh, mode, the, the loosemon demon, chaos demon lords is the well, best yeah. example of it right now yeah yeah um and dexter is another great example with the um mm -hmm. the, by battle um mm -hmm. because these effects will something will happen where the immediate effect happens like let's say uh gate perfect example is gate gate start of your main phase it's going to delete everything right now, before we finish resolving gate and tuck something underneath, um, Loosemon is going to, before it's done, use its effect to play out, like, you know, bottom deck Loosemon and play out another Digimon. Now, this new Digimon has an on play effect, but it's not true, it's not activating now. It needs to wait for both Loosemon to be finished to play it out. Loosemon gets deleted, and then we have to finish resolving gate, which is where this all came from. So gate's gonna kill sorry delete loose mod finish deleting it yeah. it moves the tr it moves the trash we need to resolve gate put something underneath and mm -hmm. then now is when we finally have this this new digimon that played out in the middle of all that that's yeah. when we get to activate its effect yeah yeah um and i think that's yeah. a really big thing is and it's it is confusing the immediate effects mm -hmm. when um you do have things coming out and like oh well in digimon the newish trigger happens first and it's just knowing that in during an immediate effect that there isn't this trigger window mm. is a huge a huge concept i think uh um, it, um well i was gonna say i think one of the big things that i've seen players misinterpret is mirage the alterns it's like it's not <laughs> yeah. an immediate effect but also you need to know that uh, like you said josh um that new effects when they become triggered because they're the latest effect they have to activate first before everything else digimon operates on a last in first out system for the those that don't know so the last effect that triggers becomes the first one that goes out um but the exam like i've seen the the most of is again mirage's all turns where it's like one one person attacks with their digimon and they have multiple draw inherits it's like well where does mirage go and all that and it's like it's always after the first draw then mm, mirage yeah once the once the draw happens off like you know say when attacking 
Mirage will trigger, see that a card was added, or trigger because a card was added, then activate its all turns because it's the newest trigger. So then you'll add the yeah. memory and then you'll go back to the other draw inherits that your stack might have. So, mm -hmm. um, um, and then you? just kind of to piggyback off of that too. So, uh, immediate effects, as we've already said, have wood, they mm -hmm. activate just before the thing that they say would happen yeah. happens and a list of things that are never immediate effects uh on deletions <laughs> on deletions are never immediate um yeah. they follow standard effect resolution and i also just to kind of like help organize it i like to think of like the effect so in this case gate uh gate is the parent effect and you need to wait for that parent effect to finish before you can actually look at anything else. Uh, which would mean that you are played Demon Lord and, I don't know, your opponent has an effect that says when a Digimon is deleted. Trigger at the same time. Yeah. Um, so, and then that follows turn player priority, which Worst only matters. <laughs> Only matters when two things trigger at the same time for both where, players. Where, where's the where's the yeah. snippet from uh, Liberator? From Liberator, <laughs> but I wanted to piggyback on something you said there, Jamie. Where um, oh my God, am I losing it when mid thought? Um, yes. So now when they say wood, they act like you said right before the thing is going to happen. And a great example of this to to showcase that is BT8 and Jamon. Um, so when you oh, did evolve yeah. into Jamon, uh -huh. you draw a card, right? Angemon effect is when you would digivolve. It is before you digivolve. So you actually recover before you even get to draw your card because it's an immediate effect. And that's a good example of it's activating before that thing's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. BT and Angemon, cool card. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last oh. question that we got on the docket here, and then we can start doing our uh, sign offs and stuff. Um, this kind of chains back to the earlier question about designing archetypes, but what mechanics or archetypes would you like to see get more support or uh, archetypes that are a card or two away from actually like being strong or being meta? Um, I want, <laughs> I want, so aside from wanting Atmon, um, I'd love hunters to get more support. Um, I do want, I want to see the cross decks flourish a little more. I wasn't, uh, we don't have it yet, but from just looking on paper, I haven't been too happy with like the, the uh, BT20 or BT19, sorry, uh, cross art stuff. Um, I want more cross art. I want more Dark Knight love. I want, I love cross wars and I want to see those decks flourish a little bit more. Especially for like, something like Hunters. And I'm gonna... I felt like Hunters was one of the most yeah. unique decks and uh, like toolboxy. And I'd love to see that deck come back in some kind of positive way. I'm gonna, but, hey, I mean, we've been seeing it in Reedles. People have been playing it. I've been doing well with it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna move the mic back here so I don't blow everybody's ears out. Oh lord. Oh boy, <laughs> no. here we go. What's happening? Just the mic! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Listen, sorry. Brother, just, just give me. One had its, just one had its time in the sun. It, it did. Got, it got, it's, it, okay, it got I have. Suspended. I have re I have said this multiple times with you. I have counted the amount of sets. We are almost at 20 sets. Or 10, 10 oh. or 20 without just mon support. <laughs> without yeah, direct just mon support. Let me let me get that right. Um 13, didn't have it? Didn't we have the Hot Mine in 13? Th well yeah, but since then. Like we are up to BT almost on BT20 now. And this is including like EX sets. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, seven to get the 20, not including the EX. Yeah. Sets. 10 sets. That's yeah. 10 also, sets, that's what it is. We are yeah. 10 almost coming up to 10 sets without just mon support. I mean, but we also, just got a new Dolphamon after since BT1, but <laughs> sorry. Uh, but also, Jessmon did get the prize cards for Nat, so. and that's why I'm mad. <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, as much as I would have liked to win those, I just you know, couldn't get there. Um, you know what the problem with Jessmon is, right, Jero? Consistency. No, it's a red deck. It's a red deck. <laughs> Red decks can be consistent. Uh, Look at Ancient Grey. <laughs> I'm having so much more fun playing. Oh. Ancient Grey. Hey, <laughs> All right. Um, Chill, but the thing bro. is, like, the there's two things that I would like to see out of like new Justmon support is either red white sister months. Yeah. Um, yes. Or and yeah. this one would be a lot more interesting to see is awakened forms that can blast Evo. 
Yeah. Be because we haven't had new Awaken forms since BC7. Like, those are the only two cards we have for Awaken forms. Yeah, um, yeah. So seeing new ones would be cool, but seeing them being able to blast would be even better. I I'd also like to see Noir. Yes. <laughs> I'd love for us to have Noir, please. No, we, yeah. we don't get that, sadly. Uh, <laughs> God, like, I get wonderful. it. Well, like, with Nuts is great. <laughs> Everyone Dude. loves Noir. Why can't we? The fact that she Why was removed from what Beale Star, like started at Beale Star, she was like, removed like, from she's the removed art. from that art. Like that's crazy. She was removed <laughs> from like three arts. Yeah, yeah. she's um, in a delicate man, though, right? Yeah, that's like I just yeah. want to. I just want my boy to come back. Like that's my pet deck. Um, I just but want to I, deal with. No, I feel I do really <laughs> want Red to like. Like like BT five, I was an I was a Shoutmon player, right? We're blitzing with with all uh, with doing five checks and blitz and then uh you know mm -hmm. uh blitz omni for game whatever, but that's not Red's like that doesn't work. Any deck can do that now. Any deck can do it. Like Red, I want Red to have an identity again. Yeah, so 100%. bad. Like I don't worry. I like as I kept saying I want Atmon, I want Cross, I want that stuff. But more than any of that, I want Red to have an identity. 100%. Um, I miss being a red player. <laughs> I want to throw onto that too. I want purple to have a proper identity because as of right now, if they're just this engine. No, hey, that's it, fair. It that's is fair, literally that's fair. just this is... engine. Cheers and stop it. Because like, because like, Generic Lord, Lord Knight right now is literally. I'm running everything Dark that animal. was from Levia into Lord Knight. Lord Knight is the new it, top end. It's just like yeah. exactly. Purple is just so generic, you yeah. know. It just, <laughs> you know what I want to see? I want to see Purple stop getting hit, so that way maybe it can get an identity. <laughs> Every time it gets an identity, it's like, uh, no, bang, no bang. <laughs> like, also, I'd like to see. I'd like to see us hit more cards. You know what? Yes. HPD, get HPD Zero. out of here. Yeah, out of here. Exit out. Uh, they, look, I I know everyone's gonna hate this. Abu X can come back. Honestly, it yeah. should. It shouldn't have been hit in the first place. They should have hit Garu X and tested it out. If it was a problem, then it's fine. At least Garurumon would actually probably be a deck right now, and it wouldn't be too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, like I said, I my thing that I want to see, I want to see Beale Star have a proper line that's not three musketeers. There's, it, granted, yeah. it's got to be purple, so we have to worry about the general purple problems, which. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I love purple. Yeah. Purple is my color. Hey, me, me and Jamie are in the same boat. Purple are, is our so, color. So careful with purple cards. <laughs> you add like one new card. generic draw trash card, it's going to be in every purple deck. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, whoa, that's not true. Depends on if the Dark Animal engine gets hit, which at this rate, because we are having, I know everyone's been saying it, we are going into another purple Nats unless we get a hit. Like okay, but our nationals again. Well, is gonna we be also a have so we also do have like you know things like Galaxy Box, which are still very prevalent, um, yeah, which also make. falls into the same issue of just cards being a little too generic. Um, where <laughs> if had those tamers been trait locked, maybe we wouldn't have that. Mm. But we wouldn't have that yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, so uh, I think uh, I, I I do say even if you hit the Dark Animal Engine, we already have a purple hybrid engine, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we've already we've already fixed the problem of hitting the dark animal engine uh purple hybrid exists mm -hmm. but true, um, true. yeah it's but like, you don't play lord knight at the top in there it's like it's know. cool it's cool to see yeah. engines being made from like deck cores but at the same time it's like digimon is a very heavy archetype based game so having an engine yeah. means like it's running wild like it's being put in every single deck and it's just like it's, it takes <laughs> over that color yeah um but oh, oh, so oh no. Jamie, oh. what was the last thing you said? Oh, uh, there was something higher? else big that. What is Jamie pointing? At? No, I gotta like, find the good one. Give me a second. I gotta oh, find the good one. one. <laughs> I got oh, two cards. Just... I gotta find. So you keep talking. There was something that, that one that came to my mind. I'm trying to remember what it was. Jamie, what was the last thing you said before looking at cards? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, I thought about the cards I wanted to grab. Uh, so there's two cards that I really want to. Not him. Uh, I love him. Though. Uh, there's two cards that I really want to have support, and one of these is very contentious, purely by the yes, uh, purely by the fact of what happened. But uh, the first one, bring him back. Bring Galactic. my boy Galactic. Well, 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 I'll back. be honest. I, I was so talking... hear me out, right? 
Yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I was talking about was uh, about this with TJ and like the most recent round of commentary videos with it. It's like we'll probably see something more when Liberator like gets like further yeah. along. Um, probably either a new Galactimon or either either that or a new Galactimon that's like a rare and then like an actual new boss monster, like how kind of like Zavaga got Medieval Gala and stuff like that. Yeah, I think with Liberator the decks, like with Zeniths, we're gonna have like the Galactimon and then some additional line. And I think hopefully they're gonna follow this trend for each of the Liberator decks because mm -hmm. a lot of them do feel like half a deck currently. Yeah. yeah. Um, like big example, Heavy Metal Jermon, right? Oh, it yeah. feels like half a deck. Um, but it's going, but we know for a fact it's going to get Liberator support and it's going to get more. And I think with it's and like uh, Schumann's line, Zephargo, we have the Gallant Monk stuff coming. I think yeah. you can expect stuff for Gallant for uh, Galactamon as well. 100%. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, I, I, I already ordered the promo <laughs> Destros. They're still five dollars for some reason. I ordered I the promo one. Destros. I'm waiting on them. <laughs> I only have one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, I know, I know we hate uh this this start but i really like this card oh lord i love great just, so far, look, right? just look it's just just a rod of the tamers to just, be just, locked both sides yeah Done. That's, and that's the thing though i don't want us to go into um what's it called uh aside from the quantum on issue i don't want us to go into functional errata territory no matter how badly i want those tamers to be trade locked I feel like it's a dangerous door to open. Just, re uh, just print new ones and ban the old That's ones. That's the thing. Just retrain. Just do a retrain. Just yeah. make new ones. With this. Yeah, they, look, Bandai has a track record, but they did it for mm. Red Purple Law. Yeah, they one did piece. it in one piece. Um, but I don't want us to hit errata territory. Because when you hit functional errata and don't get new cards, it runs into the reading the card does not explain the card. Um, and that's that's not a fun situation to be in. I didn't know I had three Altar Grace Novas. The, yeah, wow. I'm pretty sure you got them from. Didn't you get them from Zach? You got them all from <laughs> Robo. Oh man. Uh, um, no, he got me two, so I don't know where the third uh, one came okay. from. Did it come from me then? I think it I had it from you. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Naz was here. I brought all my EX5. Yeah, because I was like, yeah. I want to play EX5. It's not EX5. Was that EX5? It was EX5. Yeah, it's EX5. Dang. Proto Farm's been out for almost a year now. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Proto Farm's been out for. Like, Everyone years. get your Proto Farms. They're not being reprinted, guys. Yeah, They're fifty dollars. What do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not getting them in LM. Like that's crazy. Your At this point, I'm just banking on getting them from event packs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't have that over here. I thought I had another one. Wait, I think, no, I do. It's right here. <laughs> I think also, the proto form. Can we just ban calling? <laughs> no. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm fine with it as not a purple player. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> as a purple player, need proto form. who wants a proto form? Right no. now. <laughs> right now, send it to me. I, I need two more. <laughs> look, look. I sent you two already, didn't I? Yes, I still need the other two because I'm building bees. So, oh my lord. So I want oh, I want bees to be good so bad. When I was looking at when I was looking at deck lists, and this is like another small tangent. Oh, when I was looking at deck lists, I was like, I thought I'd. I was, well, I was putting something together and I was like, I thought I had two protoforms and I didn't remember where they were, right? <laughs> I I only had one altar that I could like legitimately find. And I was like, I guess I only have one protoform. That's weird. What happened to the others? So, uh, and then I ended up just not building the deck with the protoform. And then um, I ended up just selling it off because protoform is crazy prices right now. So I sold it to yeah, my yes. shop and I was like, just give me store credit for it. Um, two and, shops of singles, dang. And then, oh, and then we, my friends and I started talking about BT20, and then I got reminded of Alphamon. Yep. Yeah. Alphamon I have, back. I have an Alphamon deck built, and I was like, a light bulb just lit in my head, and I was like, wait, check the deck box. My two protoforms, two protoforms in there. I'm like, in I'm Alphamon. rich. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, man, no, I'm not getting rid of those perfect. because because yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting rid of those because I know those are going to be played when when we get the new alpha stuff in BC20. But I'm like, alpha, alpha wants to be crazy. In, in the yeah, moment, I, I was just yeah. like, oh my god, I have money. <laughs> <laughs> I found my two base art protoforms. Oh lord. Oh man. Um, but I mean, going back, um, I think, yeah, seeing things, seeing things that should get banned or. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> seeing seeing more yeah. things get banned, but also like seeing things come off the ban list, I feel like we don't see that enough. 
Um, we saw it with Savior and uh, Tommy. That did nothing. But yeah, yeah neither, that was like the only thing. Ended up being impactful. Yeah. Nope. Well, I mean, for Xavier is kind of nice, but. But we didn't we didn't free savior and suddenly Jessmon is best at you know no, what I mean? for sure yeah yeah um but I think there's like there there I think there might be like one or two things that are on the ban list currently that could probably come up free, free jet selfie we can't free do it now selfie. but free jet selfie, yeah, free jet selfie. <laughs> on that note free my boy X4 he did nothing no no X4 can't come back jet selfie can't come back i would agree with you but we are getting new cross stuff in 19 so we are getting new cross stuff so that ex, i don't, I don't know about that one so strong yeah such a strong card um i do think um and i i do love the ace mechanic i think it's so powerful like i think it's been the best like addition to the game for mm -hmm. for a long time and uh, i do think it does help a lot with when it comes to decks like x4 or like garumon for example that rely on like attacking on the lower end mm -hmm. um i think they're very susceptible to aces and i love that but i just that, that doesn't mean they can come off the list no. but i think the aces are such a nice addition to yeah to the game the, like the game can be a lot more controlled now instead of oh i'm just gonna eat six attacks in one turn <laughs> yeah yes so i love aces oh. yeah um uh, which judge is the most comfortable? I was gonna say, I was gonna... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no questions. I was gonna say, we can... Fun. I feel like we can but just rapid-fire uh, these. Um, I'm gonna say, Jarrell, uh, I know that's, like, somewhat, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Will has you beat from... <laughs> our Izzy, our Terrier. Um, Will has yes. you beat. I I think Lepis is still considered everybody's pookie, and so... Yeah, I don't know how I became everybody's pookie. That just kind of <laughs> happened. <laughs> no, that's... That's, that's fair. This is a very good joke from um, fellow content creator, one of my boys, uh, Digitamer Joel. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was funny. I was, I don't know. I, I feel like Praether is kind of high up there. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, fair. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, that's true. E Eagle X. Like, uh, let Eagle me, X I have I'm, some of his egg sleeves here. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm, uh, these I'm, things. Oh, I'm like copping out, but you know, my. Mod, yeah, you know, yeah. robot or uh, can't can't hurt to go with the level zero. Can we plug? Yeah, yep. let's, let's let's plug the level zero. Definitely yeah. plug them again. Yeah. Plug them again. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's a few. There's a few. There's a few actually. Jarrell's up there though, y'all. Don't worry about. Jarrell's up there for sure. We're getting Jarrell's up there. <laughs> um, and then the last couple joke questions: Is it true that to level up as a judge, you must defeat enough of your fellow judges in Mortal Kombat, and do the victors have to consume the defeated to absorb their judge energy? <laughs> Bro, we don't know how to level up. This is how you start <laughs> working events. You gotta start taking out the competition. Uh, um, so you know how like like Beelzemon like punched a hole into Leomon's chest? Um that's that's how you that's that's what you have to do. Um and then you need to make sure you consume their energy so they can never come back. Yeah. <laughs> they can't be reborn as a digi egg, not allowed. Yeah. You know how Leomon just it gets the absolute worst treatment throughout all of life? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, like um the X anybody movie, uh X Evolution is uh what two minutes then? Not even like, <laughs> dude, dude, he hit the screen and was gone. <laughs> yeah. It's like opening credits, uh he's dead. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, hope you liked Leomon. He's gone now. Oh, he's gone. Man. So spoiler alert, sorry for everyone, uh he did survive um in Digimon twenty twenty. Leomon did. survived the entire series. Wow. It's a first. Non-canon. 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 The reboot's non-canon, y'all. It's okay. I love, I love the reboot. So, the reboot has its moments. It's. I'm, I'm not going to say I fully love the reboot, but it was. it's enjoyable. It's very nostalgic. Um, It does feel like a lot of the budget went to um Ty. Uh, <laughs> but... What? I, the what main I really character? Enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed it. I think it was Dan Devimon. Beautiful. <laughs> there it is. I found it. Oh. Which I honestly, I wouldn't mind us going back to 2020 for a set, but not for again, like there's just the main cast. I need dude, we what do you mean? We are going, going back to 2024. We are set. we're going we're going back. I thought we're going back to just main characters or like protagonists. Well uh 21, we already know the two starter decks coming out are again yeah, War Grave yeah, on yeah, and Metal Grave. Yeah. Metal Grave. Yeah. yeah. Where's my Rumble Arena set? Dude. Give me a roll. Josh Rose again. Stop. Oh. Give it look, look, I just wanna say this, and we've already gotten it once. Uh the door one of the Doromons in the background has the sword. 
Oh, he's, he's, he's oh, fully Josh, gone. Oh, he's, he's back. Dead, dead. He's back. Uh, <laughs> but we have an art of a Dorumon that is an art from Digimon World 4. I know a lot of people hate Digimon World 4 because of the way that it did and it didn't explain anything. I love Digimon World 4. I wish we could play it. I want to see more, like, I want to see equipment like that. And it goes back to the Digivice. Like the guns like and the swords? Yeah. Yes, the guns, the swords, and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Just a Digimon World 4 set would be nice. I, I, feel, like you could, I, feel, I feel like you could, like, a la X anybody that and just make them, like, options that slide under your Digimon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just make them yeah. inheritables. Um, well, if you're listening, I will 100% buy uh, a like $80 rebake of Digimon World 3. Um, I'll I'm, buy I'm in the bowl with you. Related. The second I saw BT12 Gallimon's Altar, I'm like, I'm getting a set immediately. <laughs> like, just like, look, look, man, like, just yeah. give us all Did, Digimon World 1, 2, 3, 4. Give them all again. We already did <laughs> Digimon World 1. Me. We already Stop did Digimon stopped, World 1. I know, three. I know. Uh, we need Atmon. Just give me Atmon. <laughs> ignore them. And. <laughs> Oh, all right good. well i think I, <laughs> I think i think that's just about everything um does anyone have any closing thoughts um be good to each other <laughs> yes yeah, stay just, stay yeah. being the best tcg community um yeah Digimon's amazing um which i do think one of the other cool things to add on there is um I think there's a lot of Digimon players also that are not familiar with Digimon as a like a t like lore from a lore perspective or like from a TV show perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think it's rare, like the gameplay of this game is so solid that, it, that it's able to attract people who just aren't big fans of the franchise. And I think that's really also really cool for this game. Yeah. But yeah, stay, yeah. stay being the best the best yeah. TCG community. I think um, if you ever see us in person, the next big event we all. All, are all working aside from Matt, who will be playing his Nats. I'll be so. playing. He'll still be there. Yeah, I'll I'll be still there. Be there. We will yeah. all be there. Yeah, I'm so. just on the other side. So I always feel I'm on the side. Hi. side. Yeah, feel free to say hi. Um, again, like I think, oh, yeah, we're all gonna be if, in Orlando. If, if we're all working at an event, um, and we are on like a lunch break or we're on some kind of break, please don't continually ask us questions when we have a few minutes to eat. Um, there was <laughs> I only bring this I only bring this up. <laughs> Cause I think it was like South Carolina or something where I went to the bathroom and someone approached me on the at the urinal to ask me ruling questions. I can't escape. <laughs> I don't know what I didn't know what to do in this situation. But please don't do that to anybody. That oh, wasn't man. fun. Just, <laughs> just bro, just learn to hit him with. I'm on break. Uh, there's like six other judges out there. Nah, <laughs> sir, yeah. Turn. Turn and pee. <laughs> like, I'd really uh, not, not talk to you with my dick in my hand. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I mean, thank you guys for hopping on doing this with me. Um, I know we were talking about it for a hot minute, so finally getting to do it is uh, is good. So, yeah, it was enjoyable. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if we've got nothing else, um, as Ben likes to say, uh, I will catch you guys on the flippy flip in the next video don't forget to like and subscribe oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys all right cool 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 <laughs>